any request that's made to a judge or in a court of law um, could, I suppose, go to a court commissioner, but that's not where we're at in these proceedings. Um, that, to me, does not provide a legal or factual basis for the request that you're making. Um, so that's how I will address it. Um, for the record, I believe it does, Your Honor. Um, it was, it was uh, presented in the same fashion that all my motions in, in this court have been presented, and uh, you never cited the same thing with the other filings. So it, that's leading me to believe that um, it's just that document that's not being accepted when I have the other timestamp filings for the same uh, documents that I file. Every other document is, is filed in the same manner. Every last one of them. And, and no, no exception with that one, Your Honor. I understand my obligations with uh, individuals who are representing themselves to review their pleadings and to uh, construe them liberally. However, you were notified uh, the other day that future requests needed to comply with Section 802.01. Even with a liberal uh, reading of that document, um, I'm not sure what it is you're asking me. Um, it's not going to prevent this court from proceeding forward and continuing on with the trial um, and having uh, the jury brought in and the next witness called. For the record, Your Honor, will you, can you state why? Um, because it's clear what this is referring to. It's referring to why there's no bond uh, mentioned or stated in the court document. The, the docket sheet. There's no uh, bond in any of in any of these writings. Not not one time does it mention it. And so that was what this was referring to. Um, I understand what it's referring to, sir. sir also, there's no legal basis for your for argument. Record, also, so, for the record, this docket is not a certified copy, which is what I requested. I do not control the. Uh, clerk's office, you need to make a specific request to the custodian of the court record, which is the clerk of court for a certified I, I, copy. I, I, I did that, that can't done. be done here uh, in this courtroom. You have to do that through an inmate communication form. That's that's what I did, Your Honor. The, the ICF should be on record that I re specifically requested. I specifically requested a certified copy. Sir, I'm not document. in charge of that, so I'm not going to address that any further. So my understanding is a certified copy was provided to this you. This is not the certified copy no. that I'm holding, Your Honor. I know I, how again, you can take that is. up with the clerk of court. That is beyond uh, the scope of what I am addressing here. I am not the custodian of the record. I would not be the, the judge to address any concerns that you have if you believe your request was not complied with. It, it clearly wasn't because this I'm not, is not the a... person to do that, sir. It's not the proper venue in this case or forum. All right, the custodian of the record needs to reply to that. That is our clerk of court. If you believe uh, she did not do that, then you have recourse available to you, but it's not through this case. So with that, I'm going to move on. Let's have the jury brought out. I was not provided with exactly what I asked for. If, the, um, if I'm told by the court to submit an ICF for any requesting, and I request it specifically a certified copy of the docket sheet and was not provided with what I specifically asked for, then Sir, how... Sir, I'm I'm, I can't address that any further. So again, I, I would like you need to take that up with the clerk of court and you can communicate directly uh, with her office. Can but I'm not going to do it through this court proceeding. I would like that stated for the record that I did not receive what I specifically asked for and I'm sure that the ICF is on record. I can get... Mr. Brooks. For the record, we're on the record. And okay. so everything that we're saying is on the record. So it's noted. Bring the jury out, please. Um, also, I have one more thing I wanted to stay for the record. Go ahead. Um, which was also submitted via inmate communication form. So that should be on the record and it should be filed. I, I, I know it should have been received by now. It was addressed to Miss Monica Pass and it was in... Um, it was asking for uh, the complaint that was filed. It was three different complaints, and they're, they're found in the docket sheet, one from 11-23 of 2021, 
one from 11 29th of 2021 which would be the amended complaint and then one from uh january 12th of 2022 which would be the second amended complaint i specifically asked for um copies of those to be provided as they were not in any discovery Mr. Brooks, are you, I am not going to uh, answer for clerk of court pause. She is the custodian of the record, all right? And it, so you're going to have to communicate directly with her. If you're looking for just copies, I'm happy to print those off for you. I've already provided some of those things to you. I hear you saying you want certified copies. That would not be provided by me. Are you looking for certified copies or just copies? Certified copies. All right, then that will have to be addressed by clerk of court pause. So how would I do that? Because I, I can't, <laughs> sir, it, I, I've already told you you need to make the request to her. If you, and uh, that's how I have to leave it, sir. That's, I, I'm not the custodian of the record, so. I addressed it that way, Your Honor. I addressed it the way I was told to address it. From My understanding court. is it went to her. So with that, let's have the jury brought out. Your position's noted. All right. Your Honor, can we address the subject matter jurisdiction before the jury comes out? The no. jury comes out? We've already done that. And is that a judicial determination that you're making not to address the subject matter jurisdiction which has yet to be proven at this point? It has not Mr. been verified? Mr. Brooks, please, the jury's coming out. I know what you're doing, but just I've already addressed that. So is that a judicial determination that you're making? My decision on the record stands, sir. And I would like the record to reflect that you have not shown verified proof of subject matter jurisdiction whatsoever. <coughs> and that by refusing to answer, that is a tactic agreement by you, Your Honor, which you understand what that means. I know you do. Mr. Brooks, I have not entered into any such agreement. And because the jury is out and you are claiming that there's some issue um, I'm going to take this up later, but I uh, will entertain a request from the state for a curative jury instruction. All right. Thank you, everyone. You may be seated and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Uh, we are proceeding uh, with this trial, and the state may call its next witness. And, Your Honor, before the state calls the next witness, I just want to let the record reflect that I did put Exhibit 54 on the witness stand, um, and it will be um, introduced through the next witness who is Laura Thien. All right, thank you. Good morning, Ms. Thien. If you would please make your way to my witness stand, which is all the way up by me. It is up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Please be seated. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Laura, L-A-U-R-A, -A, Thien, T-H-E-I-N. Thank you. And sorry, I put an M on that previously. <laughs> All right, go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Mrs. Thien. How are you today? Very good. Okay. Ma'am, I'm going to direct your attention to, no to November 21st, 2021. Were you at the City of Waukesha Christmas Parade on that day? Yes. Were you there as a spectator? No, I was in the parade. I was in one of the units. Okay. And which group were you with? the Milwaukee Dancing Grannies. How long were you with the Milwaukee Dancing Grannies? Um, how long? Yes. Eight years. Okay. And um, how would you describe, <clears throat> first of all, how many people at that time were in the Dancing Grannies approximately? Uh, there were nine of us in the parade. Can you describe, um, were you guys friends, close? Did you see each other often? We were like sisters. We were a sisterhood. Did you meet regularly for practices? Every week. Okay. Without fail, pretty much? And we had some social outings. 
And then we've seen each other again every weekend for a parade. So would it be fair to say that the nine people that were at the parade on November 21st, you knew pretty well? Very well. Is it normal for the dancing granny to, grannies to be part of parades? Oh yes, we do lots of parades. We do about 21 of them in summer and about five to six in winter. Did you, you talked about practices, did you have um, certain numbers that you did for, for example, for the Christmas parade this past year in November? Yes, we do Christmas routines and Christmas for the holidays, and then we do different type of routines for summer. Okay. In November, did you, would you have a pretty standard formation that you would keep to do each of your routines during the parade? Yes. Did you have uniforms? Yes, we did. Can you describe them for the jury? Objection, ribbon. Uh, they were long skirts with white fur. They were blue with white fur on the bottom, blue jackets with white fur for cups and around the neck, and a white fur hat. Did you have, I'm assuming if you were dancing to music, that you had something that played the music? Yes, we have a music vehicle. Where would that musical music vehicle be in relationship to the group who was performing? Right behind the group. Oh, hold on, there's uh, been an objection. Um, it's noted, it's overruled, her answer may stand. Just in the future, if there is an objection. Uh, wait until I've ruled on it and then answer if I say uh, overruled, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, relevance. Grounds for the relevancy. Keep going. Thank you. So did you also have people walking with um, the performers in the parade to give support? Uh, yes, we have volunteers. We have two volunteers that carry the banner and a volunteer that will give us ice chips in case we get. Okay. Do you recall who were the two volunteers who were carrying the banner that day? Uh, yes, there was our usual banner carrier, uh, a young girl, Allie, and then at the last minute the gal didn't show up because we have two for the banner. She didn't show up, so Ginny at the last minute decided to be the other banner carrier. Now when you say Ginny, are you referring to Virginia Sorensen? Yes. And you knew her as Ginny? Yes. Okay, and you said there's also another support person who carried ice chips. Yes. Do you know who that was last year? Objection, Overruled. You may answer. Grounds, grounds for the overrule. I should have. You can answer. Okay. okay. Yes, grounds Bill, one of our dancing granny's husbands. Okay. Is that Wilhelm Hospital? Is that his full name? <laughs> yes. Now I have before you a document that's marked States Exhibit 54. Okay. Do you um, see that in front of you? Yes, that's okay. pretty much our group. Okay, so it consists of um, nine different, it looks, why don't you describe for the jury exactly what's in front of you? Objection. Overruled. Grounds. Do we answer? Okay, we have nine people that were in the parade. And when there are an uneven number, there is somebody who is in the slot. Okay. And uh, it was my turn to be in the slot. Okay. <laughs> so. okay. So on the top of the sheet, and I'm, I have a copy in front of me, so if we're going from the top down, um, we have the names, it says Banner, and then on the, the left-hand side as I'm looking at that, it's Ginny Sorensen and Allie, is that correct? Yes. And I'm gonna actually um, ask that this be published also for the jury and admitted into evidence. Objection. We have yet to see what's being talked about, being shown. Does Mr. It's up now. Brooks have a copy? I believe it's up in front of him now. All right, um, give them a minute to look at it. Objection. I do not consent to being called that name, nor do I agree to being called that name. 
right, the record should reflect that the um, Exhibit 54 is being displayed on the monitors at the pr present time to the parties, to the court, and to the witness. Um, there's been an offer or a request by the state that the court receive the exhibit um, based upon the testimony of this witness. Uh, exhibit 54 is received permission to publish as granted. Objection. Noted. On what grounds? Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to be specifically addressing, uh, when, so please respect that. Um, I respectfully the, request a legal re reconsideration of your ruling. Mr. Brooks, now is not the time for that. The objection has been overruled. I expect that you will honor that, and we will continue without interruption. Go ahead. I do, I do honor it, Your Honor. Um, for the record, I respectfully, respectfully reject that ruling and take exception to that ruling. Keep going. Thank you. So in the upper left-hand corner, the name Ginny Sorensen, um, in the middle it says Banner and then Allie. Um, Ginny was Virginia Sorensen. She was carrying the banner with Allie, correct? Yes. And they would be in the front as the group is going down the parade route? Yes. And the nine people who are listed in the boxes following or behind the banner, does that accurately reflect the lineup that um, you had on November 21st of last year? Yes. Okay. Overruled. You, her answer may stand. Wow. Your Honor, I'm now going to show the witness exhibit 53, <coughs> just the witness only. Go ahead. And let me know when you see it up on your screen. It's done. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple seconds of it. I'm just going to ask you if this accurately depicts uh, your group on November 21st of last year. So I'm going to play a couple seconds. It's starting at 00. zero. And uh, let's play it for five seconds. This is my group coming up. Okay. And does that accurately reflect how your group on November 21st of last year? Okay. Um, <coughs> I would... Sorry, you were shaking your head yes. Is that a yes? Yes, that's how it was. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have said that out loud. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. That's um, what I'm here for, to make sure the record's clear. Okay. I would ask the court to admit um, this Exhibit 53 into evidence and um, publish it for the jury. Objection. Overruled Exhibit uh, 53 is received permission to publish as granted. Grounds for the overrule. Ma'am, I'm going to play it straight through and then we'll go back and go through it um, and pause it occasionally for you and I to identify everyone, okay? Objection. Grounds for the overrule, Your Honor. The statement continue. Uh, is that a legal determination that you don't have to give me the grounds for the overrule as I have objected on Mr. the record? Brooks, stop interrupting. I've made my ruling. Let's keep going. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, as for a written judicial finding of facts and conclusion of law, or is that a tactic agreement, Your Honor? Your Honor, just for the record, this is one minute and 27 seconds now. Ma'am, that was the routine at the beginning of the parade, it looks like? Yes. Correct? And will you be able to identify each of the people if I go through the exhibit and kind of pause it occasionally for you to tell us um, who they are and a little bit about them? Objection, Thank you. 
Overrule. Uh, yeah. Grounds for the overrule. Not hearsay. Go ahead. Okay, so I'd ask that we begin playing it without sound at zero zero. <clears throat> if we can pause it. Um, again, can you circle Virginia Sorensen on the screen? The screen in front of you is touch. Okay. This is Ginny. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about Ginny? Ginny was our glue. She held the group together. She was in the group the longest. And I think she was in the group for close to 20 years. So she was in there for a long time. Um, she was close to everybody. Like I say, we were like sisters. And she, if you had a problem, she would always ask you about it, talk to you about it. Ginny was always there. Okay. If we can continue on, it stopped, I'm sorry, at one second. If we can uh, continue on from one second. <coughs> If we can pause it. Okay, and now that's Lee and Sharon. Okay, so who is on, as we're looking at this video, who's on the right side? The right side would be Sharon. Lee is on the left. She was right behind uh, Ginny. And I'm just going to uh, direct you to exhibit 54. I'm that's sorry. in front of you. I didn't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I misunderstood. When you say the left side, the left side of the street was where Lee Owen was, or the left side of the uh, pictures you're looking at your screen? Uh, Lee was oh, on the left, oh, right oh, behind Miss Ginny. Miss Thee. Oops. It's okay. <laughs> oh, there's been an objection. Um, it's overruled, but I would caution the state about leaving the witness. Okay. Go ahead. You may answer. Okay. So okay. right behind Ginny was Lee Owen. Yes. Is her name, full name Leanna Owen? Lee was... Overruled. Lee was very close to Ginny. They worked together a lot for, for the group. And for she taught a lot for the new people that were coming in. She was more or less the leader to teach them the routines. And uh, I rode with Ginny to every, not Ginny, but Lee. I rode with her to every practice. We rode together. So we were quite close to. Okay. And um, next to Lee, you said, stated according to <clears throat> Exhibit 54, that would be Sharon Millard? Yes. Okay. And I'm gonna focus on the people that were injured um, during the parade, okay? So, um, Next, if we can continue on, we stopped. Well, before you move on, can you tell me where that was paused? In 11 seconds. Thank you. If you continue on from 11 seconds. <coughs> and pause. The state has paused at 21 seconds. Okay. There's a um, woman who seems to be between, um, in back of um, Lee and Sharon. Do you recognize that person? That would be Betty. Okay. And do you know Betty's last name? Betty Stren <laughs> String. Okay. And did you know her very well? Uh, she was fairly new. She was only in the group for a couple years. Okay. And so, but we knew each other quite well. Would she go out on the events with you and you do social events? Absolutely. Okay. And I think I said it, I stopped at 21 seconds, if we can continue on. If we can pause it. The state has paused at 28 seconds. Behind Betty, um, there are two women who are in the forefront of the uh, video that mm -hmm. stopped. Um, the person that would be dancing on the left-hand side of the street as you're walking down the street, do you know who that is? That would be Kathy Schmeling. This was her first parade. Okay. Can you um, <laughs> circle her where she's standing on the okay. screen? Okay, if I go the way she's going. 
on the right side or left? Um, circle who you think is Kathy Schmeling. Okay. Kathy would be on the yeah on the right. She would be right there. Okay. And um, you said the other person was who? Lola. Okay. Can you circle Lola? Hospel. She is the wife of Bill that was hit. Okay. Who? Um, noted. It's overruled. Her answer may stand. Next question. Grouse. And you stated that Wilhelm or Bill was a support person that was marching the parade that day? Yes. What did you know about Lola? Lola was the mother figure. She was, I think, the oldest in the grannies. And uh, she was rather on the quiet side, but she was just friendly with everyone. Okay. Was she in the grannies when you joined eight years? Oh, yes. Before? She was in quite a long time, similar to Ginny. Okay. Um, so continuing on from 28 seconds, I'd ask um, that we continue playing it. If we can pause. The state paused at 34 seconds. Um, do you, can you identify the person who is behind Lola and uh, Kathy on, in the video? Yeah, she would be in the middle. That is... Hold on. There's been an objection. It's overruled. Grouse. Um, she may answer. Grouse. That's Tamara. Um, Rosentier. It's hard to pronounce her name, but Rosentier. Rosentreeter? Would that sound right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you circle her on the screen? Okay. That's her right there. Okay. And what can you tell us about uh, Ms. Rosentreeter? She was, um, I would say, about five years into the group, four to five years. And a um, fun person, very friendly. Okay. All of us are very friendly. <laughs> okay. You, you seem like you might be. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if we can clear the screen and continue from 34 seconds. And if we can pause the screen here. Okay. Okay, the next um, two people are behind um, Ms. Rosentreeter. Tamara, yeah. And um, can you identify those people? Yes. This is Tamara Duran. So you had two Tamaras on your, your team? Yes, we do. Okay. And two Kathys, too. But, okay. And this is Kathy. Is that Zartek? Zartek or something like that. Um, hold on. There has been an objection. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I'll sustain the objection on um, leading grounds. Her answer may stand, but I would, again, caution the state to... And I would just note for the record, Exhibit 54 is in front of this witness, and it does have the first and last names, and she's already said that it accurately reflects um, the people who are marching with the Dancing Grannies on November 21st of last year. That was not the question. It was, it was leading. Understood. Um, for purposes of identification, though, I'm going to instruct her to turn the 50, Exhibit 54 over to make sure that her testimony today is from her recollection and not from reading from a form. So if you could turn that over, please. The paper document that oh. you have. There you go. Thank you. Go ahead. Now you circled, <laughs> uh, can you circle Tamara Durand again, Tamara? Okay, this is Tamara Durand. Okay. What this you, would be Kathy Z. Okay. Um, directing your attention to Ms. Durand, can you tell us a little bit about her? I'm sorry. Directing your attention to Ms. Durand, can you yes. tell us a little bit about her? She was new, and this, again, was her first parade. She was so excited about being a granny because she had worked for months and months to learn all the routines. And when she knew she would be in that Christmas parade, she was so excited. She just couldn't wait. So. She was looking forward to doing all the parades. That was the first and last parade she ever did. If we can clear the screen and continue on with the video from 42 seconds. If 
between pause it. Okay. Last but not least, that hopefully you get me. this one. Okay, that's you. That's me. Okay, if you can circle you on the diagram, I think there's only one person in it. Um, and you said you've been with the Dancing Grannies for eight years, correct? Yes. Okay, if we can clear this, and I stopped it at one minute and nine seconds. If we can continue forward. I'm going to pause. That's the music vehicle. Okay. <clears throat> Who drove that vehicle on that day? Pardon? Who drove the vehicle on that day? My husband. Okay. And you see a, a, a um, figure entering into the screenshot. Um, do you know who that is? This would be Bill. Okay. Thank you. And that's uh, Bill Wilhelm? Pardon? Do you know the last name? It's been rephrased. Bill. Okay. That would be Bill Hospital. Okay. And do you recall him wearing a hat that day? As shown in the picture? Objection, leading the witness. <coughs> um, overruled. Grounds. Relevance. You may answer. Okay. Bill was just walking up behind uh, Tamara Duran and he going to be offering Ms. her some ice. I'm not sure you heard the question, if the state could re-ask it. Certainly. Was, in looking at the picture, was Mr. Hospital wearing a hat that day? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. And during pretty much the um, entire route of the parade, um, was he usually, was he usually in back of you or in front of your position? He's on the side of us. Okay. And usually on the the side that he's on right now? Sometimes he would be on the other. Okay. It just depended how many people we had to give ice okay. on any particular parade. Okay. And was it cold that day, do you remember? Yes, it was pretty cold. <laughs> okay. Um, I did stop the video at 1 minute and 20 seconds, and I am done with this exhibit. At some point during the parade, did you hear, strike that, were you always, with the formation that you've testified about, were you always the last dancer um, in the formation? No. On November 21st, 2021, were you, all, were you the last dancer in the formation throughout that um, parade route? For this parade, I was. Okay. We took, to, if there's an even number, nobody is in the <clears throat> slot. But if there's an odd number, there was no partner, so we just would take turns. Each different person at each different parade would be in the slot. Okay. So at some point, did you hear something unusual behind you during the parade? No, because the music vehicle was right behind me. Okay. Did so, you at any time turn around and see something unusual? Yeah, as we were going and I was dancing, when I would turn my, I seen a streak of red coming on my right side. How fast was that streak of red going? It was going pretty fast. Hold on. Um, the objections noted it's overruled. Her answer may stand. Grounds for the overrule. Relevance. So your answer stands, which you said it was going pretty fast? Yes, it just like whizzed past me. It wasn't just going slow. As it was going past you, who was in the area prior to it going past you on, and I'm assuming you lifted your right arm, was that on your right side as you were marching down Main Street? Yes. Okay. Who was in that area prior to that red streak coming through? Uh, Kitty Corner for me, that would be Bill and uh, Tamara Duran. Did you get the opportunity to see what that red streak was? Uh, yeah, and shortly, in a few seconds later, the red uh, vehicle was right in front of me, going down the center of, to me, just pointing to the center of the parade route. So right in front of you? Yes. How close did that red streak come to you? I would say a few feet. 
he had to go around the car, the music vehicle, okay. and then the right, right on the right side, and that's when Bill and Tamara were hit. So when you were in front, um, or I'm sorry, in the back of the parade lineup, um, how far were you directly in front of the music car? Uh, several feet. And the red vehicle that you've identified, it went to the right of it the It came music car? from the right side, yes. And you stated it hit Bill and Tamara, correct? They were the first ones because they were just kitty corner from me, several feet. Then where did it go? Um, the, and then I noticed I didn't see them get hit because it all happened so quick that I was still dancing and all of a sudden I seen the red car in front of me and I screamed either in my head or out loud, I don't know which, but I said, what is he doing? Where's he going? And I just screamed it because it was so unusual, and I knew if he was going down the center of the parade route, he was going to be hurting a lot of people. And he wasn't going slow. He was going at a good clip. Did, from the time that you saw the red vehicle on your right, um, striking Bill and Tamara, did it ever, did you see it slow down at all? Did I what? See the vehicle slow down. No. It just hit them, and as he was coming in, he, he started then going toward the middle where he hit two more people and then veered to the left and killed two more. You said you, it was a red vehicle. Did you get a general description of the vehicle? What type of car? Was it a car, a sedan, a pickup truck? And no, it was a, like a SUV or something. It was a wasn't just a car, it was a van or, you know, something on that order, SUV. So as the vehicle went through, did it stop after it um, struck? I think you said it struck the people in the front. Who were the people that you just testified to that died? Objection, lead the witness. Overruled. Grounds. Uh, he came oh, from on. the right. Oh. Hit two. Oh, wait, Oops. Wait, sorry. <laughs> was not me. Go ahead, you may answer. It came from the right, hit two people, and then veered toward the middle. And that's when I really seen them. And then hit two more people, veered to the left, and hit two more. And the last two people that were struck, do you know who those people were? Yes, I believe they were Ginny and um, Lee. And you testify that both of those people died as a result of being struck? They were killed instantly. And because the car came from the Hold back... On. Oops. That's okay. There's not a question. Wait till the question is asked. Okay. Sorry. After the car struck Ginny, and she would have been in the, the front of the parade still carrying the banner, is that correct? Yes. Uh, she was on the far left, right in front of Ginny. After that occurred, um, did, did you see the vehicle stop? No. The vehicle kept going? Yes. Did you see the path of travel it took after it um, struck Ginny? Well, after it struck Ginny, it was sort of on the left side of the street, and it just kept barreling through. I'm going to bring up Exhibit 54 again. Go ahead. And I'd ask that be published to the jury. It's previously been admitted to evidence. <laughs> Go ahead. Objection. <coughs> What's the relevancy of the video? <coughs> Exhibit 54, the court's already admitted it. It is shown to the jury. Go ahead. Ma'am, can you, when the car went through, can you approximate, approximate where Bill was on this chart? You can put an X where you think he was. Bill was about uh, here. I thought the sheet wasn't being shown. Um, you specifically made a ruling for the sheet to be turned over. Uh, that was during her testimony. She's now being asked to annotate the exhibit. So it's proper. Your objections noted. It's overruled. Go ahead. Thank you. 
Um, can you um, show the jury using this chart and maybe you just using a line the path that the red um, vehicle took? It struck there, hit Tamara, Betty, Lee, and then Ginny. Thank you. If we can take a screenshot of that, and it would be State's Exhibit 54A, I believe. And you stayed after it struck your group, it continued going in the left hand? Yes. Side. Do you know what group was in front of you? What was in? I'm sorry, do you know what parade group was in front of the dancing grannies? Um, and if you don't remember, that's okay. Yeah, I'm not real sure. Okay, that's fine. Um, for the record, uh, the court did capture the annotation and marked it as 54A. Okay. <clears throat> After the vehicle went by, what did you do? After the I when I noticed that vehicle in front of me, and then it went to, toward the left and continued going down. It all happened in a matter of seconds. And after the car kept going, I looked on the road and all I seen were bodies. I thought I was in a war because there were just so many. And I just went into shock and I just grabbed my jacket like this and went to each body to see who it was and if I could help. I'm gonna, you said that you grabbed your jacket, you held both um, sides of your jacket up to your neck area, would that be a fair statement? Yes, yes. I just, Objection I rather think be that seen. I needed. Hold on. Okay. The objections noted, it's overruled, her answer and the description provided for the record by Attorney Basie, I would note was accurate. Um, you may continue. Grounds for the Overrule. Party noted. Go ahead and tell me, baby. So you said that you were in shock. Um, I just went into shock seeing the body. So I just, I needed to hold on to something, I think. So I just grabbed this and just went from body to body. And then the people were running into the road with blankets and the uh, anybody that was in the medical group quick came and were helping the people that were laying in the road to see if they could help. The people that you saw laying in the road were all of those people from your group? Objection, yes. Hearsay. Overruled, not hearsay. <coughs> Just a reminder, once again, let me rule on the objection before you answer. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. Can you walk us through who you went up to and what you observed after you said you started going to each of the bodies to check and see if you could help? Um, like I say, the people from the sidewalk, they just ran into the road to help. Spectators? Spectators from the sidewalk, yes. They were wonderful to try to help, bringing in blankets to cover the people, to keep them warm. Um, then there was someone from the, I think it was the tavern, the bar right there, and someone came out and had us, kind of corralled us, me, Sharon, and Kathy, into the tavern to give us some warm coffee or something to drink. But I couldn't stay in there. I had to be out there. And I had to know what was going on and how badly everybody, anybody was hurt. So when you came out, who did you go up to? I Then I went up back, I was on the road again, and just looking who was being helped and who was not quite being helped yet and how badly they were hurt. I could not even find Tamara and Lee. Okay. And when you say Tamara, Tamara Durand or Tamara Rosentreter? Durand. Okay. So you couldn't find Tamara or Lee Owen? Okay. Sorry. Did you hear her ask, was that Lee Owen? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, the two of them. 
I couldn't find. <laughs> the rest of the people were accounted for, but I didn't know where they were, so when they were hit, they went flying on the sidewalk. Okay. So and that's why I didn't see them on the road. Okay. You saved yourself, Kathy Zadarzduk, um, Kathy Schmeling. The three of you went into the bar initially, is that correct? Um, when they came out, they told us, you know, come on in here and get warm and have something warm to drink. And Were you injured as a result from, did you get struck by the, the red vehicle? No. Did uh, you see injuries or do you know if Kathy Schmeling or Kathy Zadarstuk got hit by the red vehicle? I don't believe so because Sharon, Kathy, and I were uh, Kathy Z were kind of walking in the road trying to see if everyone was being helped. How about you said Sharon was also looking to see if people were being helped. Did yes. you observe any injuries on Sharon? No. Okay. We were the three more or less that and the fourth one was Kathy Schmeling and she immediately went on the sidewalk and I think it was a sister or someone was in the, on the sidewalk watching the parade. She quick ran up to Kathy and took Kathy right home. Kathy's sister, Kathy Schmeling's sister took Kathy Schmeling home? Yes, because she was crying standing there on the side, on the sidewalk, and she was kind of uncontrollable. So let's go, who were the first people that you saw as you walked out to check on people? Um, Sharon, I seen her. I'm sorry, of the injured people. Oh. Um, who did you see of the injured people? Um, approximately where were they and what did you observe? Okay, I went straight ahead and it was mainly Tamara. Uh, Rosentreter? Yes. <laughs> and then it was um, Betty String. Were they both on the ground? Yes, they were laying in the road. Did you see, um, were they and, able to move? Pardon? Were they able to move? Um, not much, because the people were telling them to lay still, because I believe <laughs> Betty had two skull fractures, and they didn't want her to move her head or anything. But yet she was awake and she could talk. Okay. So. How about Tamara Rosentreter? Now she had several broken bones, ribs, arm and wrist, leg. Um, so she had a lot of broken bones, but she too could talk and communicate. How about Lola Hospital? Lola immediately ran to her husband. She was, he was laying kind of on the sidewalk because when he was hit, he just went toward the sidewalk. And now he was hurt. He wasn't killed instantly. And she had a blanket for him and she stayed with him until the ambulance came and took him to the hospital. Did Bill recover? from the injury sustained by that vehicle? No, he didn't. He died during surgery. Did you um, note any injuries or find out of any injuries to Lola Hospital? No. Okay. And uh, Lee, Owen, you said you could not find. Did you find Lee at all that evening? Yes. Later, the police had me identify her. They had her picture on their phone and because uh, I asked where Lee was and they showed me is this Lee and um, it was her. She was thrown on the sidewalk. That's why I didn't see her in the road. Do you know what side of the sidewalk she was, th or what side of the road she was thrown on? She was on the left. So as you're marching down Main Street, she was on the left side? Yes, she was right behind Ginny. Okay. And the picture that they showed you of Lee, was she alive when they took that picture? No, she was killed instantly. And Ginny, did you see Ginny that night? Ginny was killed instantly also. She was right there on the road. Again, on the left-hand side? Yes. And did you go by Bill Hospital? 
Bill was on the right side. He was he kind of was thrown on the sidewalk. Did you go by him at all or yes. objection? Okay. I talked to him. Hold I on. there's been an objection. Oh, I didn't hear him. <laughs> um, it's overruled and uh, her answer that she gave me. I didn't even state the objection, but I'm going to show you what's been previously marked and admitted into evidence, which is Exhibit 15. It's going to show up on your screen, okay? Do you see, let me know when you see it in front of you. And okay. I'd ask that it be published to the jury as well. It's previously been admitted into evidence. Go ahead. Thank you. Ma'am, can you, um, is this look to be Main Street, the parade route from November 21st of 2021? Objection. The witness. Sustained as to the form of the question, please rephrase. Do you know what Exhibit 15 is? Um, no, I don't know what this really is. Okay. Do you see, does it appear to be a map or something else? Objection. Pardon? Being the witness. Okay. Um, overruled, she may answer that. Does it appear to be a map? Or something else? Yes, where there's a lot of names and kind of a map. Okay. Do you see uh, a purple line on that map? Yeah, with all the purple stars on. Or I don't know if they're purple stars, but I see some yellow stars, some orange stars. Yes. Objection, yes. leading the witness. Um, this has previously been marked and admitted into evidence. I think Wait. I can direct her attention I, to these items. I, I think the, your objection is noted. It's overruled this exhibit has previously been received. I think the stars are, the colors are pretty obvious what they are. There's various color stars and when the exhibit's color been stars. received, the jury can determine for itself later on um, what colors they are and the meaning of them. Uh, but go ahead, you may ask uh, your next question of this witness. And you see the street that, uh, the long street that's depicted on exhibit 15, do you see a name on that street? Okay. Do you see it? Yes. And what is it? Um, I see all the stars. I don't know what the question. Do you see a name on the street on the map? Okay, let me see. For Main example? Okay. Main Street, Broadway. Yes. So is Main Street the, the street that you were on when you were marching and your group got hit? I believe it was. Okay. Now, if you go to look, look to the um, bottom left, there is a box that's labeled Dancing Grannies. Do yes. you see that? Yes. And it has um, six names, seven names in that box. Are, are those all part of the Dancing Grannies? Objection. Leading the witness. Overruled. She may answer. Grounds. She may I answer. answer. Go ahead. Um, with the exception of Bill, he was Lola's husband. Yes. But. I'm sure he would appreciate that distinction that he was not one of the dancers. <laughs> right. Um, all those people were associated with the dancing grannies? Yes. And the people in red are the ones that you testified are, are deceased as a result of being struck that day? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And the other three that are in green are those people who were injured as a result of being struck that day? Okay, one, two. Yes, Lola wasn't really injured. She just was with Bill when he was injured okay. to keep him calm. Okay. And you see that there's a black line that directs it to a yellow star. Do you see that? Objection, the witness. Yes. Um, overruled, this exhibit has previously been received. It's fair for the state to direct the witness's attention to a particular part. And her answer may stand. Does that appear to be the location where your group was struck? Okay, yes. It does? It looks like it would be, yes. Thank you. We can take that off the screen. I'd now like to show exhibit 55. Go ahead. I'm assuming just to this. Yes, just to the witness. Um, if we can play it for approximately, first of all, do you see it in front of your screen? Yes. Okay. Starting at zero, zero, we're going to play it for approximately 10 seconds. 
um, and then I'll ask you some questions about it, okay? Thank you. Does that accurately depict what occurred to your group on November 21st, 2021? Yes, it does. I'm going to um, ask that it be admitted into evidence and published to the jury. Objection. Overruled. Browse. It's relevant. Permission to publish is granted. Exhibit 55 is received. And Your Honor, this clip is 15 seconds long. I would ask that the um, full clip be played at this time. Go ahead. Ma'am, the group that you saw on the right-hand side of the screen, was that the Dancing Grannies? Yes, it was. And did you see headlights coming through your group? No, because it came from the back. I'm sorry, in the video, did you see headlights oh, coming through yes. the group? Oh, yes. Objection, Lee, Louise. Yes. Overruled. She may answer. And you answered? Yes. Okay, thank you. And was that the path of travel you recalled seeing the red vehicle take as it went by you on the right and went through your group? Yes. I want to show it one more time for the jury so that they can now focus on the headlights on the vehicle. Objection. Relevancy. Uh, your objections noted. It's overruled. Grounds. Uh, permitted to publish once again. Grounds. Is granted. And your honor, the state is going to play it at 50%. Grounds. Objection. Grounds. Noted. Overruled. Grounds. Relevance. Okay. If you can start, and please. I request a legal reconsideration of your ruling. Denied. Grounds of the denial. For the record, may I request a legal or factual basis for your ruling? Is that a legal determination, Your Honor? Are you making a judicial determination? You may continue. May Attorney Basie. Did you see the body come forward and fly front in front of the truck? Um, no, me being in back. I'm sorry, in the video, did you see the body Objection. flying in Be front of the movies. truck? It's not no. leading. In the video that you just saw, you didn't see a body? Oh, yeah, on the video, but not. Right. And do you know who that was? Um, yes. Who was that? Uh, when they had it on TV, that was no, the man, right? I'm sorry. Who was the bo the body that went flying in the street that came towards the front of the screen? Hold on one second. That last answer, I'm going to because it was non-responsive, but I'm going to strike it, instruct the jury to disregard it, and then if you could state your question again. Certainly. Um, if we can go to um, Exhibit 55 again, to approximately the 10 second mark. Are you withdrawing that last question then? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. May I be struck? The question? It's been withdrawn. May it be struck from the record? It's been withdrawn. May it be struck from the record? It, there does not need to be struck, so the request is denied. It's been withdrawn. May I ask for a legal and factual basis? Remarks of the attorneys and questions of the attorneys are not evidence. It's the answers that are evidence, so that's why it's not being struck. You may continue, Attorney Basie. Thank you. Do you see a body probably in the middle of the screen on the left-hand side? On the ground? Yes. Do you know who that is? Well, it's hard to tell who it is, but it, that would probably be Ginny. Okay. Thank you. I'm now going to show you um, just you. It will be in front of you on the screen, Exhibit 152. <coughs> Exhibit 152 is 14 seconds in length. I'm going to uh, show it to the witness the entire 14 seconds to see if she recognizes this. Oof. 
Do you recognize what's depicted in that video as what occurred and what you saw on November 21st of last year? Uh, yes, okay. but Thank when you. the car went, hit them, it was, you know, it was on my side and I didn't see them flying okay. or anything. I Correct. just... But you saw the car come through and you previously testified that you saw the car strike them. You didn't see where they went. Is that Objection correct? Objection leaving the witness. Um, overruled. That answer may stand. I'm going to ask that this be admitted into evidence and published to the jury. Objection. Where's the relevancy? Grounds the objections noted it's overruled and exhibit 152 is received permission to publish is granted grounds for your ruling your honor relevant i'm going to play it at full speed initially and then i'm going to play it at 50 percent so i will ask you questions after i play it full speed okay mm -hmm. if we can uh, play the whole 15 seconds with some <laughs> Ma'am, who did that red vehicle strike um, in that exhibit, <coughs> Exhibit 152? Objection. Leading the witness. Uh, saw the video. Hold on. Saw the video. Hold, hold on. There's been an Oops. objection, everyone. Um, the objection is noted. It's overruled. Now you may answer Ground, the question. Grounds for the overrule, Your Honor. <coughs> it's overruled. You may answer. Grounds for the overrule, Your Honor. Go ahead. You may Tomorrow answer. Tomorrow, Duran. Thank you. I'm not going to play it at 50% speed for the jury. And that was the car that you saw travel in front of you? Yes. Objection leading the witness. Overruled. Grounds for the overrule, Your Honor. It's overruled. Next Grounds. question. Ma'am, I'm now going to, um, if I did not already do it, I'd ask that Exhibit 52, 152 be admitted into evidence. I would then direct the witness's attention to Exhibit 153, which will show just in front of your screen, okay? Grounds. Um, exhibit 152 was received already. No need to address the request for grounds by Mr. Brooke due to that. And then the exhibit is up in front of the court, the witness, and the parties, but not published. Objection. I do not consent to or agree to being called that name, Your Honor, for the record. Go ahead, Attorney Basie. Thank you. This clip Would is... Would that be noted for the record, Your Honor? Go ahead, Attorney Basie. Thank you. May this... that be... Noted for the Mr. record. Mr. Brooks, Your Honor. stop interrupting. I just want to make Mr. sure. Mr. Brooks, it's on, stop. I just want to make sure it's on the record. Go ahead, Attorney Basie. Thank you. Um, this clip is 38 seconds in, in length, Your Honor. Um, again, I'm going to show you the first five seconds of this clip and ask if it um, accurately reflects your observations from um, November 21st of last year. <laughs> if you can start. Ma'am, is that um, your group in the Walkshire Christmas Parade last November? Yes. Okay. I'd ask that Exhibit 153 be admitted into evidence and be published for the jury. Objection. Relevancy. Exhibit 153 is received. It may be published to the jury. The objection is noted and overruled. Ma'am, I'm going to have it played at full speed, and then I'll ask you some questions and then play it at half speed, okay? Mm -hmm. Clear bikes.
Ma'am, what did you see in Exhibit 153 that was just played before you? I seen Bill being hit and thrown towards the sidewalk. And that's Bill Hostel? Yes. Okay. And um, I'm going to show it now to, the, to you and the jury. Just a clip of it, starting at zero seconds. At 50% speed, what I'm going to be asking you about is where you are in this clip, okay? So if you can start it. <laughs> See, we may have a future granny in, in front of us here with the green hair. Sure looks like it. Objection. <laughs> Rather than see. Um, your objections noted, sustain, the jury will strike that last question and answer. I mean, the jury will disregard that last answer. Now, if you look at the street, Pause. Sorry, keep going. If we can pause it now at 21 seconds. I would just ask, did you see after Bill Hospital was struck, did you see some feet coming through the screen on the bottom at the very end of that clip? Objection, relevant. I've seen him in the oh. legs, yeah. Okay, and then did you see your feet mark? <clears throat> that would have been the approximate area that he was hit. Did you see your feet in the video at the end? It's fine if you didn't. It's Not really. really. Nice. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm going to give Mr. Brooks an opportunity to ask you questions as well. Please answer those for him. Go ahead, your cross. Uh, during your testimony, you kept referring to um, a he, he, he. Uh, who were you referring to when you said he, he, he? I can't understand him. Can you please uh, state your question a little bit louder? She was not even yeah. here. I'm, I apologize. I'm sorry. You um, need to be closer to the microphone or projector I, voice, I, okay? I got it. I got it. Thank you. Um, during your testimony, you kept referring to a he, 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 like a lot of times you would say he, he, he. Uh, who were you referring to by the he? Who did you mean by the he? He? Yes. When it was showing Bill. No, it, not, not Bill the, would be the he. Uh, before today, um, have you seen any of those videos before today? No. Um, you stated that you saw a red vehicle uh, sh strike the, the grannies. Do you remember if that was, or let me back up. Do you remember what type of vehicle you saw? It was like an SUV. It wasn't just a car. It was, you know, the flat back. I'm bad for cars. And all I know is I've seen the red streak and then all of a sudden I've seen the car in front of me. So would you describe it as a car? Um. It was a vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> and how close did it come to you, if you recall? I would say several feet. I was in front of the music vehicle, and it came around the, the music vehicle on the right side, and that's where Bill and tomorrow or and I was a little bit this way because I was directly behind the music vehicle. Were you were you able to see into the vehicle in any way? Was I able to what? To to see inside of the vehicle. No, because it came behind me. 
So, so you didn't get a look at the driver at all? No, I don't have eyes in the back of my head. Do you recall what happened when people were struck by the vehicle? No, I couldn't see them being struck from where I was. I, the vehicle was big, and it was after the vehicle went through our group that I seen all the people that were struck. Um, earlier you testified to uh, people being thrown to the side of the street. Um, would it be fair to say that, in, and I'm going off your last answer to the last question, would it be fair to say that you didn't see that with your own eyes? No, that's where they were found. But you didn't see it with your own eyes? No, I couldn't. Sorry about that. Um, you also stated that a few of the people that were struck died instantly. Would that be fair to say? That died instantly, you mean? Yeah, you, you stated that a few people that were struck died instantly. Would that be fair to say? Some of them, yeah. And? Two were injured and how, how would you know for sure that they died instantly if you didn't see them struck? Because uh, the police found uh, two of them on the sidewalk, one on the left, one on the right. They were already dead. So were you told by the police that they were dead? That what? Were you told by the police <clears throat> that they had passed away? I could see they were working on them and weren't getting anywhere. They were trying to get the heart started with the heart machines. Nothing was working. And you, you know that for sure? I seen them working on them, yes. Not but, all of them, but on some of them. So was it fair to say at that time that you had no uh, medical diagnosis at that point in time? Nobody gives nobody diagnosis. They just were working on them and trying to get them revived, but so, they couldn't do it. So it would be fair to say at that time you had no knowledge of the injuries sustained? Um, no. You stated that, uh, I believe it was uh, a Kathy. Did you know a Kathy that was part of your uh, group? Yes, two Kathys. You stated, I don't remember which one, but you stated that one of the Kathys um, had a sister or something. Yes, that was... in, on the sidewalk watching the parade. Um, do you recall the sister's name? No. Are you sure it was a sister or maybe just a relative? Could have been a sister or a relative. I figured it was a sister. So it would be fair to say you didn't know for sure who it was? That's an answer. It was go, someone go, in the go family. Go. You may answer. <laughs> go ahead, you may answer. Okay, it was someone in her family that was trying to console her, but she was just standing there out of control, weeping and um, you stated that uh, there was a, mu a music van or of My, some sort? Our views, a music vehicle. And, and you also stated that you couldn't hear what was going on behind you because the music van, would that be fair to say? That's right. I didn't hear anything. I just seen a red streak when it came past me. So would it be fair to say that if a vehicle was honking a horn, you wouldn't have heard it if it was behind you? I don't know. No, there was no horns. 
but you don't know for sure because you stated that the music was playing pretty loudly. Would that be fair to say? That's for sure. But whether I would hear a horn or not, I don't know. Were you able to see a, a license plates number of the vehicle? No. I was just shocked that a vehicle would be in the parade route. I didn't have time to read a license plate. And you stated uh, that there is a, also a member of your group named Lola. Named what? Lola. Lola, yes, it was her husband, Bill. And she, to, to your knowledge, to your recollection, Lola was not injured? No. You spoke of, uh, you spoke with knowledge of a lot of the injuries. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Um, have you yourself ever had any medical training of any kind? No, my family is all in the medical field. Have you yourself ever no. been in the medical field? No. Did you see anyone behind you struck? No, because I was behind the music vehicle. I mean, in front of the music vehicle. And you yourself were, weren't injured, right? No. no. The car couldn't get at me because they would have to go through the car. You stated um, that you went in inside of a building at, at some point or yes. one of the businesses. Yes. And you, you stated that you couldn't stay in there because you wanted to see how bad everything was outside. Would that be fair to say? Well, I was outside first walking and seeing everybody, then watching them work on them. And the tavern was trying to comfort us by inviting us in for coffee or water or something to get us. But I couldn't stay in there. I had to be out there with them people. Do you recall about how long you stayed in the tavern, I think you said it was, before you yeah, went it, back, back out? I would say five, between five minutes and 10. So when were you uh, informed by, uh, I guess I would say, uh, medical personnel of the injuries to your group? When I seen them working on them, they had the heart machine on Ginny and blood was pouring out of her mouth and, and I knew she was gone. There was no doubt about it. At, at any time, during the incident, did medical personnel come to you and no. tell you injuries? No, just the police came to me to rec to um, to know that where Lee was, because I was wondering where she was, and the police showed me her photo and said that she was gone. At one point in, uh, in your uh, earlier testimony, you pointed to the defendant table and said, that's him from the news. 
Any reason why you would say that? From the news. I yeah, didn't, that's... I didn't say that. You testified that you saw, you pointed to the defendant's table and said, that's him from the news, and you were cut off right in mid-sentence. I wasn't saying that at all. So have you ever seen any news coverage of the incident? Um, from, like from Lola, I knew that her, that Bill had died during surgery that evening. And so I knew that from her, because she was at the hospital with him. I knew about... Um, Ma'am, did you hear the question about, uh, about seeing news reports? And just be a little more specific on the time, okay? I don't know what I'm, you I'm, mean I'm about news reports. Okay, fair at, enough. On the regular news, or...? Let, he'll rephrase. Okay. At any time, did you... Do you recall seeing any news reports related to the incident at any time? It was on the news, yes. So, so it would be fair to say that you watched reports of the incident? When it was on the regular news in the evening. Was it? They didn't cover much of it. They just showed that the dancing grannies, you know, that... Would it be fair to say you, you learned uh, additional information that you didn't have when you were at the incident from yeah. the news? Uh, not from the news, I didn't know. Okay. I knew from the family. So would it be fair to say that before you received information from the families, you weren't sure of the exact injuries to the grannies in your group? Some of them I knew right away and because you, of the police. Did you know just from observation or were you told? Um, I was pretty much told. And from the videos that you saw here today, which you already stated it was your first time seeing any of those videos. Yes. Did you see anything in those videos today that you didn't see at the time of the incident? Yeah, the people being hit and flying. Once the car was in front of me, it, that's when it left the bodies behind. But you didn't actually see. I the couldn't. The car was in my way. And do you recall who else was not injured from your group besides oh, yeah. besides Lola? Uh, the four of us were not injured. Uh, do you recall the names of who was not injured? Um, Kathy Z, Sharon Millard, um, me and Lola and Kathy. The other Kathy, there's two Kathys. Both, both Kathy's, to your knowledge, were not injured? No, they weren't. We were all that was left standing.
Do you recall about what time you left the parade after the incident? What do you mean after the incident? Do, do you recall what time you, you left, left the parade? Um, that was when everybody was taken away. And um, I think then we were in the bar having a cup of coffee. And then I had to find a way home because the music vehicle had to stay there because it was a crime scene. So, so Kathy Z's family took her home, so they gave me a ride right away, too. And you don't recall about what time that was? No. That would be fair with, a, with everything else going on. At any time in the the days following the incident, did you see any reports of a suspect at, at any time? I seen it on the news that a suspect was taken or found, you should say. And and what what are you referencing when you say found? What was I what? Oh, found, in other words, the police found him. I didn't know who, where, or who he was at the time. I don't recall if this question was asked, so I'm going to ask it. Were, were you there with any of your family members, immediate family or anything? My immediate family members, just my husband. And he was driving the music vehicle. Was he, in, was he injured in any way? No. Outside of being shocked by what well, he was seeing, phys physical, yeah. physically, physical no. injury. Did he? No. Did he suffer no, any? Because he was in the car. Do you recall giving any uh, police statement, or were you interviewed by any law enforcement yes. after the incident? Yes. Do you recall uh, if it was the same night of the incident or in the days following? Both. Both. Right there at the time and then the next day. Did you ever uh, file any claims related to the incident? I believe not of the incident, no, because I was there when they were talking to the gals that weren't hurt. They were like interviewing us. The the four of you, correct? The four that weren't, uh, the two, yeah, the two cats. Yeah, the ones that were left, yeah. Um, do you know if they filed any claims related to the incident? If what? Do you know if they filed any claims related to the incident? Objections? Grounds? Grounds for speculation. Grounds? <clears throat> um, the way that he asked it is uh, overruled. Um, so you may answer if you know. Okay. Um, no, because we were all together and came to every interview that they needed from us.
Do you recall uh, seeing or reading any complaints related to the incident? Sergeant Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. You don't have to answer that. Okay. Should I rephrase the question or? It was sustained as to the form of the question. <clears throat> At any time during uh, any interviews with law enforcement, were you shown a complaint related to the incident? Objection, Ben. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. Were you informed that it may be a possibility that you might be called to testify in this matter? Um, a lot later, um, not at the time. We, I had no idea of testimony until. Would you, would you say much later as you say, would, would that refer to weeks, months? Months. I was in no shape at the time to testify or talk about anything. Uh, do you recall seeking to testify? W wanting to testify? No, I didn't ask to. This just happened when we would be in our interviews with, and then. So it would be, it would be fair to say that you were asked or yes. subpoenaed? Yes. Do you recall by whom? I imagine the DA, sir. <clears throat> when you say the DAs, do you mean the district attorney's office? <clears throat> yes. Did they ever identify to you as being the plaintiff in this matter? Grounds. Uh, sustained. Next question. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Relevance grounds. Do you recall ever? being told that there was a plaintiff in this matter? No, it's just, I was interviewed a few times, the five of us, um, and that was pretty much the end of it until months ago where. I think probably a little explanation is needed. Um, are you aware what a plaintiff is? Objection relevant. Grounds. Sustained. Next question. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Next question, Mr. Brooks. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Ask your next question, please. I I, I I am. I just want to know the grounds, just for the record, the grounds for the sustain. Ask your next question. Your Honor, the grounds should be put this on the record. Ask your next question. I'll address this all at the next break outside the presence of the jury. Ask your next question. Your Honor, with all respect, I think the Mr. jury Brooks, deserves. Under 90611, ask your next question, or I will determine that the cross examination is now closed. I'm, I'm keep gonna going. Ask, I'm going. I'm going to keep going. I just think the jury deserves to hear. Mr. Brooks, I'm testimony. instructing you to stop making those statements. The jury will disregard. This is the cross examination. It's not your opportunity to make legal arguments or. Uh, to testify. You'll have an opportunity if you so choose to do that later. With all respect, Next is, that is not question. questifying. The jury just deserves to know. All right, um, under 90611, um, the cross-examination will be determined. Question, Sir, you didn't follow my very clear instructions. Um, does the state have any follow-up? No, Your Honor. All right, our, thank you, ma'am. You may step objection down. Objection to that, Your Honor. I, your objection's not, noted. Ma'am, you I may step not. down, and after she steps down, I will be excusing the jury for a few moments. Please rise for the witness and for the jury as they 
leave the courtroom. Mr. Brooks, please wait. <coughs> you may have a seat, everyone. <clears throat> to specifically address the repeated request by Mr. Brooks for the court to state the grounds, sir, I am not legally required to do that. Those are legal determinations uh, that if you feel there is an error later on, you can address on appeal if you are convicted. I have been answering many of them uh, at your request, but I may not do that at all times. In fact, you're asking me to provide that explanation and really highlight for the jury um, the court's opinion on relevance. That's why we don't state that. There's an objection, it's a party makes it, states the grounds. Uh, sometimes I ask the opposing party um, for their position. Um, sometimes I do not. Many times it's very self-evident. Either the objections are baseless. Many of the hearsay objections are baseless. Um, your objection to hearsay is it's not hearsay. Uh, so that's why to me they're self-evident. I say sustained and we go forward. So you need to be aware, sir, that when you ask for the grounds, you're asking me to state a legal conclusion in front of the jury, um, which I don't feel is necessary uh, for the reasons that I've already stated, that um, you're asking me to highlight uh, my opinion on relevance and my determination on relevance. So going forward, you need to be aware of that. Um, again, not a sign of disrespect, it's the record, <laughs> is self-evident many, many times. If I feel that more argument is needed, I'll excuse the jury, but I haven't felt the need to do that uh, up until this point. And I will caution you once again, sir, 90611 is the statute mode and order of interrogation and presentation controlled by the judge. The judge shall exercise reasonable control over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses and presenting evidence so as to do all of the following. A, make the interrogation and presentation effective for the ascertainment of the truth. B, avoid needless consumption of time. C, protect witnesses from harassment or undue embarrassment. Um, and it goes on, but for purposes of what I'm going through, that's the most relevant portion of 90611. So when I give you the warning that under 90611, I will cut off your cross-examination, it's because you're violating 90611. And so, is that a judicial determination that I violated 90611 when- I'm advising well, you, sir, um, it's not a specific determination as to anything uh, that's happened thus far, just a summary of why I am relying upon 90611 uh, throughout the uh, questioning of witnesses and the presentation of evidence. Your Honor, um, so um, with that, we're gonna continue. I'm gonna have the state be ready with their next witness. Your Honor, I'm, I'm not interrupting you. I'm letting you make you, a clear record. Mr. I, Brooks, you have actually interrupted me. I just let you go through the whole st uh, citing of uh, 90611 without saying anything. I, I'm not asking for the parties to make an argument under 90611. So I'm advising you. Stop interrupting me, please. I'm advising you, sir, uh, so that you have hopefully more knowledge and awareness as it relates to the statue that I've cited um, dozens of times during this trial. I'm, I'm well aware of what I'm citing, Your Honor. Well aware. <laughs> All right, and so. It, and I'm just seeking for the record to be clear. Um, with all due respect, Your Honor, um, that's judicial misconduct because you're not allowing the jury who deserves to hear 
certain aspects of testimony. Um, like I stated yesterday, under the Sixth Amendment, I have the right to face my accuser, which means that I can question about clearly the plaintiff being the accuser. How come I can't question about uh, if a witness may know or have had any prior interactions or any conversations or, or anything of the sort with the plaintiff who has yet to show their face? Also, I didn't even, the reason why I was objecting the way I was is because I was trying to get to the question of um, the witness saying that about the four um, ladies in her group that were not injured. Um, there's relevancy because with her stating on the record, clearly for the record and for your honor and for the court and for the jury that these ladies were not injured in any way, but yet there's still charges associated with these, with these ladies who were not injured. That should be dismissed. We are not at that point, sir. The charges I read refer you to the preliminary jury instructions for first degree recklessly endangering safety and the elements or the elements they don't need to prove. There are certain elements. And so um, I'm not going to have a debate with you over the law at this point. I've made my rulings as it relates to certain questions that you have asked and whether they're relevant, whether they're vague, whether they call for speculation or a whole host of uh, reasons that a question can be objected to. I'm not further going to address uh, your uh, position on um, May I request a legal reconsideration finished, of your ruling, sir. Your Honor? You interrupted me. I'm not done with what I was trying to say. Um, it was no way you, for me to know that because you paused. I'm sorry. I apologize. Just because I paused doesn't mean I'm done. But so, you paused for quite a while, so I wasn't sure. In any event, sir, we're going to keep going. Um, any error you believe I've made, you can raise again on appeal if you are convicted, but we will proceed forward. Does the state have I'm their not next witness? To available please do not interrupt i'm asking this and that's why question. i just that's why I was mr just brooks quiet. you're interrupting stop does oh, yeah, the state have available their next witness we do but could we please request a comfort break your honor i'm sorry but we sure. haven't gone about two hours now all right that's as fine long as we'll take out. a uh, 15 minute break that's fine thank you you're welcome for the record your honor this we haven't addressed subject matter jurisdiction uh, we are off the record mr
Thank you, be seated. Back on the record, then appearances are as they were before. State have their next witness available. Yes, Your Honor. <coughs> All right, let's bring the jury back out. I don't uh, consent to being called by the name that this court chooses to identify me by. Um, I want to state for the record that I'm here as a third party interviewer on special appearance on behalf of my client. Can that be noted for the record? It was noted this morning. May it be noted again for the record so that we can keep the record clear and accurate. The appearances are as they were this morning. They are no different. Bring the jury out. And we have yet to address subject matter jurisdiction, Your Honor. We still haven't, I still haven't been shown any verified proof that All rise. this court has subject matter jurisdiction and at this point may I request an affidavit that you your honor have no bias no conflict of interest and no interest in the outcome of this case Mr. Brooks the jury's coming out we'll address your legal issues later if I deem them appropriate judge do you hold the full Mr. judicial Brooks, power please, of the state or is please. this the military right, can power you please take the jury out thank you Do you hold the full Mr. Brooks, jurisdiction? Mr. just wait until the jury's out, please. I ask that you show that respect. I, I will. I will. Thank you. You all can be seated. Mr. Brooks, just make your statements. What do you want to advise the court today? I want to first say, state again for the record that I do not identify by that name, nor do I consent to being called that name. Uh, Your Honor, um, with all respect, uh, I'm merely asking you, do you have the full judicial power of the state or is this military power? I'm sorry? I don't understand what you're asking me, sir. I'm asking, is on this- on what legal basis are you I'm, making I'm, that request? I'm asking, for the record, is this a common law, common, common law court or an admiralty court? What, what, what are we in here? And I'm, I'm requesting an affidavit that you, Your Honor, have no bias, no conflict of interest, or no interest in the outcome of this case. Um, and the reason why I'm, I want to state this clearly for the record um, mainly is because of the bias that's been shown. Um, I have not been getting any uh, certified copies of any requests that I've made, which I was told by this court to uh, address inmate communication forms for anything that I that I may need. I've done that, I've complied with that. Every time I've needed something of the court pertaining to documents, I've done it the way the court has asked me. And I've always stated that I wanted everything to be certified. I have yet to even get that. My, um, my court docket sheet was not a certified copy. Um, when I asked your honor um, of your oath of office, I asked for that to be certified. You stated for the record that you would not give me a certified copy of your oath of office, which you are required to show if I ask for it. I've, I've brought up um, 
my Sixth Amendment constitutional right that has been pretty much discarded. And that is based on the fact that I have the right to face my accuser, which would be the plaintiff, state of Wisconsin, in this matter. They have yet to show that a claim is, 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 is I mean, a living human being can only make a claim. An entity cannot make a claim. I've requested uh, for the complaint to be provided. The complaint from November 23 of 2021, the amended complaint from November 29th of 2021, the second amended complaint from January 12 of, of this year, 2022. I have yet to see those. Um, there was no record of a bond in my docket sheet. I'm asking that I ask for that to be verified by proof that hasn't been provided. There's so many um, biases clear biases in, 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 in questions that are not being asked based on judicial determinations made by your honor. Um, you look at the discrepancies and, and I think they're clear. Um, I think at minimum I deserve for the subject matter jurisdiction to be verified and proven. I've raised that issue numerous times, pretty much every day, every time. I, I come before your court, Your Honor. I, I address that, and it has yet to be proven. Uh, my filings have been disregarded, even though they've been filed into the record, even though they've been time stamped. I haven't got the original copies of, of any of them, which I'm supposed to get. Um, and as we sit here today, I, I, I'm still not even understanding the nature and cause of the of the charges that hasn't even been proven can that be provided in any way I'm, I'm i'm basically sitting here confused because i don't understand why these proceedings are are allowed to continue when there's so many things that have not been provided they haven't been provided in my discovery they haven't been provided to me by uh being brought to my uh pie where i'm housed in the jail I'm without so much information, valid information to this matter. And, and I believe that it should be verified and it should be proven for the record. And if not, I move for this case to be dismissed for failure to appear by the plaintiff and failure to state a claim for which relief can be granted. Everything that I'm saying it has merit and it has validity. As we see here today, I'm still... Uh, being charged with charges that shouldn't even exist based on the testimony that we've heard for the last few days. There's so many things left to still be proven. The The prosecution team hasn't even proven that they're licensed to practice law in Wisconsin. Are, they haven't proven are they just bar association uh, uh, members or do they have state issued licenses? That has not been proven, which I've raised that issue for the record. I'm not even sure if that was even recorded in the docket sheet. There's so many things and, and your honor, you still haven't stated for the record if you have full judicial power of the state or is this military power? That hasn't been proven. Nothing is nothing has been proven, not subject matter jurisdiction, not licenses to practice law. My Sixth Amendment right has been basically trampled over. No complaints have, have been sh shown. Neither of the three that I've requested, by the way that you told me to request them by in, inmate communication, um, nothing is certified that I, that I get copies of when I clearly ask for them to be certified and to be filed into the record. It's, it's to the point where I... Your Honor, you should you should rec recuse yourself from the from the pre uh, presiding at this point. If you're not going to um, abide by the oath that you swore, which was in your oath, correct? You swore to protect the Constitution of the United States. You swore to protect we the people. 
that is not being done here. If every valid argument that I raised is, is, is taken by the court as a sign of disrespect or a sign of trying to intentionally be disruptive or, or uh, causing a problem, when I'm merely seeking understanding because I don't understand, I'm merely seeking to understand why this information has yet to be provided and we're this far into this matter. And there's still no verified proof. Even as I sit now saying this, there's still no proof being provided. Zero. How is this case allowed to continue without these uh, documents and filings being verified? Is there any legal factual basis that that can state why this information is, has not been provided? Why the docket sheet is incorrect? Why there's so much on the docket sheet that should be on record that's not even in there? That if we had the the uh, the recordings of the record, they would see was brought up numerous times that that doesn't even show up. I'm just I'm just asking for your honor to be fair, which is another right that I have, the right to a fair trial and the right to an impartial jury. It's I can go on and on and on about what's not what's not being done. I have again, I, I, I say I have the right to face my accuser. Where's where's the injured party? Who's who's making the claim? I asked your honor numerous times. For your honor's name, you wouldn't answer. I asked, did you have a claim against me? You did not answer. I asked the whole courtroom, did anyone have a claim against me? No one said anything. Which you stated for the record a non-responsive answer. A non-responsive answer is, is an agreement. Which will be a tactic agreement by you, your honor, that you don't have to answer these questions that you should be answering. I have that right. The the plaintiff in this matter, which was stated by witnesses in testimony to be the state of Wisconsin. But when I asked, do they see the state of Wisconsin present in the courtroom? The question is shut down, which is a valid question. The plaintiff should be present in this matter. Where is the plaintiff? Who's bringing the who's bringing the claim? Because we know an entity can't bring a claim. It has to be a living, breathing human being. No one is stated for the record if they're the injured party. Not your honor, not the prosecutors, not anyone in the court has stated to be an injured party in this matter. No one. Not one person. I have the right to demand that the court place in the evidence any unrevealed contract. Has that been provided to me? Have that been placed in the evidence? I would like to see it, which is my right. I have the right to inform the jury about the truth in their duty, in their rights. That's the First Amendment and the Sixth Amendment. But I'm repeatedly told to shut the question down when this is valuable information that the jury should be privileged to know. They deserve to know. Once they were chosen to sit on this jury, why are we keeping information away from them that they deserve to know? They ultimately have the power. They decide the matter. Why are we keeping information, valuable information from their knowledge? That's, that's a disservice to the jury. And frankly, it's a dis disservice to the court that they're not allowed to hear things that they should know, that they should be informed of. It's our right to inform them of everything that they have the power to know, to do and to know. They deserve that much. It would, it would, be, it would be a travesty for them to make a decision without being fully informed. And these are all valid, valid things. I have the right to protest and object if any of my rights or demands are not being met. I've done that numerous times only to be shut down. Numerous times. 
I've raised uh, the, the issues that I didn't consent to anything that may have been suggested on behalf of my former attorneys. I've never even consented to them making a plea on my behalf. I haven't, as a matter of fact, when it comes to a plea, I haven't even had the, the opportunity to entertain any plea that may have been suggested by the prosecution. We haven't even, we haven't even talked about that. Not one time was it ever brought to my attention that the prosecution even wanted to offer a plea. That's another issue. I have the right to challenge the jurisdiction of this court, which I've done numerous times. I have the right to demand that the code be construed in harmony with the common law. I just raised that. I'm constantly referred to as pro se when I've raised the issue that I'm pro per. I have the right to conduct my defense pro per free from professional restrictions imposed upon licensed attorneys, which this court is well aware that I am not a licensed attorney. In fact, the court is also aware that I only had three days to prepare for a trial that the prosecution has been, been prepared for for a whole year. We see these boxes right here. This box alone is 45 or 50 pounds full of so much information. I, 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 I haven't even gone through half of it. It was stated for the record that the discovery the in its entirety was brung to my housing unit on the 29th of September, which trial was scheduled, that would be a Thursday, which trial was scheduled for Monday. How can I possibly go through all that, all the paperwork, all the the uh, digital discovery and, 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 and things of that nature? How can I go through all of that and be prepared in three days? That's a clear bias. I did not have time to prepare for this. Everything I'm doing is off the top of my head, winging it, taking it as it comes. When the court is well aware that I was not prepared, I raised the issue that it should be an adjournment, at least at the minimum it should be an adjournment because of that fact, at least to let me go through all the discovery. That was denied. No valid reason was stated for that when your honor knew there is no possible way, humanly possible, that I could be ready for a trial of this magnitude in three days. That's clear bias. I have the right to face the injured party claiming damages. That's under Article 3 and the Sixth Amendment. I raised that issue again. Where's the injured party? Is the injured party present in, in, in court right now? Can anyone can anyone make a claim against me? Can you make a claim against me, Your Honor? Do you know of anyone that can make a claim against me, Your Honor? Can anyone right now in court, anyone, make a claim against me? And because of that, Your Honor, the motion to dismiss should be granted based on that alone. There's, there's no injured party in this matter. So who makes the claim? Who? I have the right to put the judge on notice of my intent to appeal in any ruling decisions during the case. You stated for the record that I will have to wait until appealing process, but it, my right is that I can raise that issue during the case, which I've attempted to do. That's been shut down. <laughs> I have the right to specifically reserve all of my rights, which I do at the beginning. I have the right to say what I want and to be heard under the First Amendment. And when I attempt to do that, it's taken as a slight to the court, a disrespect to the court, or me intentionally coming into the court to be disrespectful, which I've stated that that is not my intention. Never, never is it my intention. 
I never intend to walk into your courtroom, Your Honor, and be disrespectful intentionally. I never come into this courtroom to disrespect anyone. But because I don't understand, I raise these issues because they have validity. I have the right to object to any statement made by the judge or the prosecution. I've done that and been repeatedly shut down. Without a, without a, uh, without a lawful explanation, I've, I've repeatedly asked the court for a, a, a motion for a finding of fact to determine if things are being done legally. I've been denied that numerous times without merit, which is also my right. I have the right to recuse the judge at any time, which is also a right. I have the right to a speedy and fair trial by impartial jury. I think it's safe to say that my speedy trial right has definitely been violated because this matter has been taking place for roughly a year. I've never consented to waiving anything related to a speedy trial. And if that was done, it was done without my consent or without my knowledge. We're way past the speedy trial date, way past when the uh, change of venue motion was was brought up. I believe that was the first time I came before your honor in, in early March. I, I wanna say March 11th of this year, when uh, the uh, change of venue motion came into play. It was decided by your honor that that wouldn't be decided until uh, the 20th of June, I believe. That's That's over, the 90 day mark right there for a speedy trial. That was denied and, and I, I, I still don't understand how that was denied when it's, when it's clearly obvious that at minimum the venue should have been changed based on the fact of the magnitude of the matter. There's no possible way Anyone in this county would not have some type of connection or some type of knowledge, whether they were um, told something by someone that they may know. Uh, the news reporting alone, just that alone, there's no way that this trial should be taking place in Waukesha County. That, that's obvious. That's obvious from the way the motion was presented, the coverage alone, the, the political campaign ads that plastered the defendant's face all over the TV every single day. Every time a political uh, campaign was brought up, it made reference to this incident. Every single time. The fact that uh, people have children that go to the same schools in this county, that people may have worked with the same people in this county. You yourself, Your Honor, uh, uh, stated that you at one time worked with the father of one of the people that, that was injured in this matter. That is a clear conflict, conflict of interest right there. You also stated for the record that not only did you work uh, with, with this father, but that uh, at one time they may have donated to uh, your, I don't know if it was to you becoming a judge or uh, I, I would have to look through the docket, but you said it on the record that they donated money to uh, uh, a cause of yours. You also stated that when you had gained knowledge of the incident and that their family member was injured in the incident, that you reached out via phone. I don't recall if it was text message or an actual phone conversation, but you put that on the record. 
You also stated that the nature of your relationship was strictly professional. I don't know about you, Your Honor, but I've I've worked numerous jobs and I know what professional relationships is and personal relationships. I've never had the cell phone number of anyone that was a, a personal relationship saved to my phone that I could reach out immediately when I learned something. That would constitute a personal relationship of some kind. Whether, whether hanging out from time to time, having a cup of coffee or hanging out time from time, grabbing a beer or hanging out from time to time, watching a game or, 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 or anything of that nature. It would, it would definitely be more than just strictly professional. That was stated for the record. Um, again, I go back to the Sixth Amendment again. In terms of when I asked for the the uh, the motion for uh, the evidence motion that I raised, that was denied without any explanation. That would be strictly to. Uh, placing the evidence any unrevealed contract that's under the Sixth Amendment clearly there's been repeated repeated and repeated violations of my Sixth Amendment we all know that the United States Constitution is the law of the land period it trumps everything we also know that any law repugnant of the Constitution is null and void. We know that. There's still there's still no no basis for the motions being shot down. Why was I why was I not granted the motion for finding a fact? Why did it take so long for me to be brought my entire Motion for discovery. Why was the motion to prove jurisdiction not verified? Why was why was the motion to dismiss the case for all the reasons I said not being granted? Which brings me to the motion to subpoena witnesses. I did everything that was asked of me by the court pertaining those subpoenas. It was understood by the court that this is my first time ever having to do this. Um, I didn't understand how to properly, pro properly fill out the subpoenas at which the prosecution volunteered that they would give assistance. The only assistance I received was for them to check to see if it was filled out right. That was it. That, that doesn't amount to any assistance. I was still left to fill it out on my own. And then when I did that, correction still had to be made, which would verify what I was saying. I don't know how to do this. But I still complied to what the court asked of me. And even then, it was a big old thing about the subpoenas. I can't subpoena the plaintiff in the case. Well, how can I not subpoena the plaintiff in the case when under the Sixth Amendment, I have the right to face my accuser, which is the plaintiff of the case. So how how could how could the subpoena not be filed and how could the plaintiff not be called to the witness stand? That begs the question of does the plaintiff even exist? Which it was stated for the record that not only by a, a witness, a detective, Detective Casey that got on the stand and said on the record that is an entity which is not a living breathing human being and then it was stated again by you on the record your honor that the plaintiff is an entity so the question still stands how can an entity bring a claim if it's not a living human being so where's the claim Will will the the plaintiff in this matter, the state of Wisconsin, be allowed to testify? Would they be allowed to be in the courtroom? 
No, they will not because they don't exist. Therefore, the claim doesn't exist. For all those reasons that I just stated, the case should have been dismissed a long time ago. Once those issues were raised, this case should have been dismissed. And at the very minimum, it should have been di dismissed because those still have yet to be proven. We're still talking about jurisdiction. That's been being asked for over a week. There's still no, no providing of license to practice law yet. Not even by you, Your Honor. Why was I not provided with a certified copy of your oath of office? Why, why would you not state the name that is on file with the Secretary of the State or... I made reference the first time to the Secretary of the Treasury and then you stated on the record that it's the Secretary of State, even though you knew what I was referring to when I asked. You referred to your name tag, but that's not the name registered. We both know that. So why wasn't that proof verified? You gave me a... Uh, a copy of your oath of office, but it is not certified. So how can I verify that it, that is the true oath of office that you signed? How can I verify that it, that is that is valid? That's the reason why I asked for it to be certified, which you stated for the record. You will not do that. You never stated any uh, legal reason why. I have the right to ask for that legally. I also have the right to call any witnesses to assist my defense, which is the main reason why I subpoena the plaintiff in this matter. I also have the right to challenge all relevant laws in this trial in terms of their intent, interpretation, fairness, enforcement, and whether they serve and protect the people. From my knowledge, the, the design of the statutes of the law was written for the common people to understand. So that would mean the final determination or interpretation of what the law says comes down to the people. You know this, Your Honor. Are you or are you not a public servant? You also know that this docket sheet is inaccurate. Every filing up until the point that I started representing myself was filed in a name that was represented by all capital letters, which is not my name. Nor has it ever been my name, nor have I ever seen that name or individual. Every single filing or paperwork was all in capital letters. Ever since September 29th, roughly around there, now everything starts to go to lowercase letters. Why is that? What, what prompted the sudden change?
I still have filings that have all capital letters. Which I state every time I come into your courtroom, Your Honor, that that is not my name, nor do I consent or agree to being called that name. I'm merely here as a third party intervener on behalf of my client. Did I accept for value and return for value? I, we go through this every every time I every time I come here. Every time. You bring the uh, Illinois versus Allen when we had the issue of me being removed from the courtroom. We went through that where Illinois versus Allen states that there are three options when a defendant is being disruptive in court. You stated for the record that you identified a fourth one, which is not cited anywhere in that case. It's not cited anywhere. So the question would be, how did you come up with a fourth option that's not written in that case? Did you take it upon yourself to add this fourth option to justify denying me my constitutional right by being present? You could have done the three that were stated. Any one of the three you could have done that were stated in the case. Nowhere does it say you can create a, a fourth option. Not, uh, not upholding my constitutional rights. I'm sure you know about Title 18, USCS 2381. Which states that it's treason not to uphold your oath of office. Treason. You repeatedly make judicial determinations that clearly prejudice in, uh, uh, my defense. And then when I question you about are you making judicial determinations, I'm repeatedly shut down. Which leads to today. The constant push not to have an informed jury. Not giving legal valid grounds on objections. Not noting objections for the record to make sure that the record is clear. I'm sure somewhere in the jury instructions, you informed them that the state of Wisconsin was bringing the claim. But then you make the judicial determination that I'm not allowed to ask questions about the plaintiff. That's clear bias. And it prejudices, it prejudices my defense. You know also that you have an electronic filing system. I find it hard to believe that I was told yesterday about my um, subpoena for the plaintiff that I had to wait for a filing in a, in a, in a timestamp when I've seen it done numerous times in, in, in just a few seconds right in front of my face. When the prosecution needs something filed, it's, it's filed immediately. I have to wait or I have to wait to the next day. That's a clear bias and a clear prejudice to my defense. Obviously, the court knows that I'm not privileged to the same uh, 
filing system. Um, which brings me to the reason why I brought up the issue of assistance of counsel. Under the Sixth Amendment, I have the right to assistance of counsel. It doesn't say anything about representing yourself without assistance of counsel. Having counsel represent you and having assistance of counsel is two totally different things. You, Your Honor, gave me paperwork that was a, a waiver of counsel. We both know that any contract can be altered if I don't agree to certain terms. I crossed out everything in that paperwork that I did not agree or consent to and specifically wrote on that paperwork that I do not waive my right to assistance of counsel. At the very least, I should have been awarded a standby counsel. Not someone to represent me, to speak for me, but someone to help me do things in a timely fashion. Get things filed in a timely fashion. Get motions together in a timely fashion. Make preparations uh, to, to get things done that I don't have the privilege to do in my current situation of being housed at the Waukesha County Jail. I gave you back that paperwork and you accepted the paperwork that I altered that you understood that I didn't agree in consent to those things that were altered. You accepted it and you filed it. That is in the record. I have copies of the same paperwork that you accepted. So when you accepted that, With no objection, that becomes a tacit agreement. But yet, I'm still forced to come in here with zero help. I think it's clear that that prejudiced my defense. Knowing that the prosecution has everything that they need for this matter at, at their fingertips. And I have to jump through every hoop possible to even get things filed in a timely fashion. It was stated for the record that the unit that I'm housed in, in the Waukesha County Jail, and per jail administrator Angela Wallenhoff, that I'm only allowed out of my cell for a few hours a day. So I'm roughly locked down 22 hours a day. Not given the privilege to access everything that I should be able to at, at the time that I should be if I was general population. Arrangements could have been made months ago for me to be at, at least in some form general population with an upcoming trial. Reference was made to being able to use a Lexus Nexus or whatever it's called. We call it the law library. That may be the easier way to describe it. I'm only a, a allowed to access the law library at certain times during the day. The rule of the jail is that when you're not in the day room, you can't access the law library, which is on tablets. We are not allowed to have those tablets in our cells. That prejudice my defense. 
How can I work on my case? How can I look up certain case laws? How can I do any of this if I don't have full access to it? I even suggested some type of order that could be made by the court to allow me more time out of my cell or to talk to jail administration about allowing me more time out of my cell to be able to use those when needed. And, and to be frank, in a proceeding of this magnitude, there should not be even a time where I'm not access, where I don't have access to, to the materials that I need. If I'm not in the courtroom or sleeping, I should be awarded the time to work on this case, seeing as how I only had a couple of days to prepare for a trial of this magnitude. Which brings me back again to the change of venue again. Even right now with trial going on, there's still political ads being shown every day that reference this incident. There's still talk throughout the jail about it. There's uh, been a ton of hate mail received to the jail since the beginning of this. It did die down for, for a little bit, but it picked right back up the closer we got to the trial. Hate mail that comes from people right here in the city of Waukesha. Which gives more credibility to the venue needing to be changed. Yet and still that was denied. It's impossible for impartial jury to be found in this county. And that's not and that's not to uh, discredit people in the county that can be impartial. It would be unfair to say that no one can be impartial. That, that wouldn't be accurate. But with the level of scrutiny that this whole incident has, the, the reporting, the, the Facebook groups, the, the, the constant, there, there were Facebook groups created because of this. The reporting live stream on, on, on Court TV has comment sections where a, a, a lot of insensitive and nasty things are said. The sheer ins insensitivity of, of some of the things that, that, are, that are said on there. I know a lot of people probably don't care about what I'm about to say, but it still needs to be said because it's truth. The fact of the matter is, is that I have children too. Family too, loved ones too. That also have been ridiculed and and. and and had their names drugged to the mud and, and, and have threats towards them. Loved ones that had to leave their home because they were getting threats thrown through their mailbox. Children that didn't feel safe going to school because they were getting bullied behind what was being said. And that's not to sweep anything under the rug whatsoever. To constantly say and report this incident as an attack, 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 terrorism, terrorism. It's unfair and it's insensitive. It's a definite, definite tragedy, definite.
and that will never be swept under the rug. There's always going to be healing that, that has to take place. It's going to be difficult. And that, that should not be swept under the rug. Whatsoever. But it's very insensitive and unfair to not recognize that there, there's many, many, many other victims that never is talked about. And for people to paint a certain picture, mostly from this county, to put this picture out there, it's not only hurtful, but it's insensitive and it's not true. I'm sure the court read through the motion for a change of venue. I'm assuming though it was it was a lot a lot of paperwork in those motions. I think it was obvious obvious that the venue should have been changed. Obvious. It's too many connections and it's too close. It's too close. If there was any chance for a fair trial and an impartial jury, it should not have been in this county. But yet it was denied. without any validity, zero. There's so much bias that's going on that And even with all this, for the record, we still have no proof of jurisdiction. We still have no bond on file in the docket sheet. We still have no plaintiff. We still have no claim. We're not sure of the relationship between you, Your Honor, and a father of one of the people that was injured. We're not clear on that relationship, no matter how well prepared the speech was, because it was a prepared speech. That was obvious. Where's the proof? I just asked it, that, that same question. Can an affidavit be given that there is no bias, no conflict of interest, and no interest in the outcome of this case? There's still no proof if you hold the full judicial power of the state or is it the military power? Mr. Brooks, I've given you about 50 minutes to make your various arguments. You've now repeated yourself a number of times, so I'm going to turn to the state to see if they have any response. Go ahead. Thank you, Judge. Judge, I'm going to summarize what I just heard by quoting from a case from 
the Eastern District of Wisconsin uh, federal case found at 2022 Westlaw 3045190. Can you repeat that last I'm one? I'm so sorry. 3045190. Retzloff versus Moran. The this case is talking about many of the topics that Mr. Brooks has now recited to the court and simply states, the majority of Retzloff's filing is incomprehensible jargon and cut and paste legal mumble jumble. Sovereign citizen theories are frivolous and wholly without merit. And the court goes on to Site to Bay B E Y versus the state of Indiana at 847 Fed 3rd 559 on pages 559 through 560, a Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals decision from 2017. Mr. Brooks Objection. knowingly said that he didn't call that name nor do i know any individual by Sir, that name your honor please do the courtesy of not interrupting the state as they did not interrupt you for over the almost 50 minutes that you spoke thank you please continue your honor the record is very clear that mr brooks knowingly willingly voluntarily and intelligently insisted on representing himself in this trial he has no constitutional right to stand by counsel, none whatsoever. The court patiently went through the form and advised him of many of the things he's complaining about here today, the resources of the state, the knowledge of the law, his ignorance of the law, and his words to this court, and I quote to the best of my ability, it don't make me flinch one bit. That's what he told this court, whatever it was, two weeks ago. Now he's here complaining over and over and over again how unfair this is to him. It's highly offensive. I don't know because, unfortunately, I was talking to my investigator if he accused this court of treason, but I certainly heard that word come out of his mouth, and it is absolutely shocking that he would throw such a word around so loosely in this courtroom. This court has been exceedingly patient, exceedingly respectful of his rights at every turn, at every turn. I want to address this claim that he only had three days to prepare for trial. It's absolutely a false statement. The record should reflect that he does have three banker's boxes on his table. The record should reflect that every time the state calls a witness to the stand, he swiftly and easily turns to those boxes, which appear to be alphabetized or organized in some fashion by the public defenders who turned it over to him and quickly removes the folder of the witness who's testifying and effectively cross-examines that witness using notes from the public defender. We know that because he's tried to confront witnesses with the notes from the public defender. He is not going into this blind or with one arm tied behind his back. They did all the homework and he's simply sitting here reading their notes, reading their cross-examination questions and asking the questions and then going on to his ridiculous questions having to do with his belief in the sovereign citizen movement. There's no way this record would reflect that this defendant is not adequately prepared for trial. He's never asked for a speedy trial. He makes conflicting statements. On one hand, you violated his rights because it's taken us so long to get to trial. And on the other hand, we're rushing him to this case and he hasn't had adequate time to prepare. He is not, not, not denied access to legal materials in the jail. The record is very clear from the jail administrator. 
it should not be confused. He misleads this court intentionally to say, I only get out of my cell two hours a day. That is a fact. That is for his own safety so that other inmates do not inflict physical harm upon him. He has access to a tablet. He has access to a computer. Whether he chooses to ask for those resources is up to him. I would also cite the court to U.S. XREL George versus Lane, L-A-N-E, Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals at 718 Fed Second 226, where a pro se defendant attempted to complain on appeal about his lack of access to a computerized legal research system paralegal training or law school education. The court rejected that contention and said, once a defendant has asserted his right to refuse counsel and conduct his own defense, he has no constitutional right to access those resources. And again, you warned him, Judge. You fairly warned him. And he basically acted as if you were insulting him and said, it didn't make him flinch one bit. Much of the last 50 minutes, which this court has graciously extended him the opportunity to go on and on and on, is nothing more than legal mumble jumble. He's reading from some typewritten transcript. I can see that from where I'm sitting. I don't know who's giving him these materials, but he has an agenda here. It's to stall, delay, disrupt, intimidate, and it's not going to work. Thank you. Objection to that. Um, Your Honor, that's, that's, a, that's a load of crap. Mr. Brooks, that's my opportunity now. I gave you about 50 minutes. I just want to object to, to the, the disrespectful comments that, that was just made. I'm not trying to hold you up from what you're going to say, but that's a load of crap. Mr. For, Brooks. For her to sit there. Mr. Brooks. For her to sit there. objection is noted. For her to sit it's, there, Your no, Honor. No, it's my turn. Let me, let me go through this. I graciously gave you 50 minutes to raise all these various points that you want to bring up. I then gave the state an opportunity to respond. That is the proper procedure. I followed decorum. I followed civility. I did not interrupt you. The state did not interrupt you. Your objection to their characterization, it's noted for the record. I am going to render a decision at this point. Please listen and please do not interrupt. As I indicated, the defendant spoke for about 50 minutes, raising a litany of complaints and issues and theories regarding his view of how this case has proceeded. Many of these issues, if not the vast majority or even all of them, have already been addressed by this court in one way or the other. Looking at, for example, his complaints about change of venue, it is true this court denied the change of venue motion. The court made a record at that hearing. I stand behind that record and that decision. The arguments made regarding that decision, which I would note he has yet to file an interlocutory appeal ch challenging that, uh, are nothing more than speculative without a basis in law or fact. To say that this jury is biased would be a complete miscarriage of justice and a mischaracterization of the process this court painstakingly took in order to obtain a fair and impartial jury. There is absolutely nothing on this record 
before the court throughout these proceedings to suggest that this is a biased jury. I stand behind my previous determination and the process that this court went through, including initially calling an unusually large panel for which the clerk of court's office sent the initial qualification questionnaire and then ultimately a case specific questionnaire was sent to approximately 1400 jurors or potential jurors. There was ample opportunity for the parties throughout the proceedings leading up to the end of August to review those materials. There were numerous strikes for cause that this court entertained. Even prior to that specific hearing, the parties met, they conferred, uh, the state agreed not to challenge the vast majority of the challenges to jurors brought by uh, the defense. Then there was the hearing. Uh, then this court uh, at jury selection uh, allowed for an indefinite number of strikes for cause. Many were granted, if not all. Uh, and then even on the day that the jurors were brought in, the court provided the jurors with a supplemental questionnaire dealing specifically with the issue of exposure to uh, the political advertisements. And then each, each sorry, party had the opportunity to exercise 10 preemptory strikes, which is well above the number of strikes allowed for by statute, which would be six based upon the homicide charges, one extra for the alternates, which would be seven, but out of an abundance of caution and in the interest of justice, the court gave each side 10, for which many of those Mr. Brooks chose not to exercise and then pursuant to state law, uh, the clerk of court chose names to strike by lot. Again, there's nothing on this record before the court to suggest that this jury that we have is anything but fair and impartial. And I take issue with the characterization that they are anything but. They've been diligent, they take notes, they are attentive. They come to this court as the case law says, there's a presumption that they come to the court without bias and it's through the jury selection process that the parties and the court ferret out that bias. Many of the jurors who were brought in were struck for cause. Many others were not, um, but ultimately we have a fair and impartial jury. As I listen to the litany of issues and arguments and complaints raised by Mr. Brooks, I would note that they are all unsubstantiated, conclusory allegations and assertions without an adequate basis raised in law and fact. There have been several misstatements by Mr. Brooks uh, regarding either the record that's been made, items that's been provided to him, or the basis for the court either sustaining or um, sustaining, I should say, or overruling objections, for an example. Um, there's been a mischaracterization of his rights that he claims to have. As I have stated repeatedly, your constitutional rights are not absolute when you're in a criminal trial, meaning your First Amendment right is not unfettered. It is frankly no different why the case law is very clear. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. No one has a First Amendment right to do that. In a criminal case, the parties have an obligation to follow not only the Constitution and the statutes that are applicable, but to follow criminal procedure the rules of evidence. That is what circumscri circumscribes the rights that a defendant or the state has in a criminal trial. The issues you raise, for example, regarding subject matter jurisdiction 
are baseless, they're frivolous, and they're not anything this court needs to address further. The fact that you now are asking questions about whether this is admiralty court or a military court or a court of competent jurisdiction is frivolous. This court has jurisdiction over the criminal cases brought before it by the state of Wisconsin. In this particular case, these are allegations that criminal conduct occurred in the city of Waukesha. The city of Waukesha is within the county of Waukesha. This court sits as an elected official in the county of Waukesha to hear these types of cases. That is clear. The only argument or relief that I could discern through the course of those 50 minutes was Mr. Brooks's request that this case be dismissed for lack of subject matter jurisdiction. And as I have just indicated, this court has jurisdiction. It's not been right. Let me rephrase it. The issue has not even been raised properly. There's never been a written motion. There's never been even an oral motion that would comport with 80201, which requires that the basis for the relief being requested be stated with specificity and be based in law and fact. The vast majority of the points that you raise, sir, are issues that you can raise on appeal. It is true. You have a right to an interlocutory appeal. I would not be the judge to decide any of those issues. So the fact that you complain about what I do, it's noted the record is going to be very clear. All right. I have a court reporter who's taking down the record of everything that is said and done in this courtroom when we are on the record. And so I don't have to all the time say it's noted for the record because we're on the record. I sometimes do that to hopefully make it clear to you or to note it. I don't always do that, but I'm not required to do that. You raise issues concerning, I guess, plea bargaining. I have never been made aware that you would want to change your plea in this case uh, and that you're not aware of the state wanting to do that. Um, that is the first time any such issue has been raised and I see it as a distraction and as simply a statement made by you as part of the, the litany of things um, that you are not perhaps pleased with. As far as my conduct in this case, I already addressed those issues. I'm not going to revisit uh, issues related to uh, my familiarity with the father of one of the victims that was done very early on. I made a very thorough record and I gave the parties at that point an opportunity to address that after they had ample time to digest that information. While it's true you have a right to seek substitution of judge, it is not unfettered. There was a time limit for that. In fact, it was exercised because Judge a prior judge was assigned to this case and your attorneys on your behalf exercise that right of substitution. So to say that you have the right to seek recusal at any time would be a misstatement of the law. And even if you think that should be exercised or there is a valid claim for that, sir, it's not been raised in the proper way before this court. This trial will keep going. I still expect the basic rules of civility and decorum to be followed. That includes, sir, that when there is an objection to a question that you ask, that you wait for the state to indicate their objection and the basis for it. If I need additional information, I will ask for it. If I don't need additional information, I will rule on it. 
And I do expect that even if you disagree with that ruling, that you will abide by it and that you will move forward. Whether that's asking a new question, rephrasing a question that you've asked, I do ask that you follow that simple rule of decorum. And that's you not interrupt, and then you follow the rules of procedure. As far as the other issues you raise concerning your right to assistance of counsel, the record before this court over the many days that that topic has been raised, even going back to the two afternoons of hearings this court held, um, I will not revisit those. I believe I honored your request to represent yourself as is required by uh, the Constitution of not only the United States of America, but the Constitution of the state of Wisconsin. And that you made a very deliberate choice after being fully advised and aware of all the requirements that I needed to go through under the case law, both case law in the state of Wisconsin and case law from the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, which not only guides this court, but this court must follow. I agree with the state and would um, draw your attention to the two cases that were cited. Uh, United States X. Rel. George versus Lane, found at 718 F. 2nd 226, and Retzloff versus Moran, uh, found at 2022 Westlaw 3045190. I let you put on the record all of those points. Uh, in order to give you that opportunity to make a full record of the issues that you have believed that you are entitled to raise. But those sovereign arguments regarding uh, written findings of fact, bill of particulars, regarding contracts that you enter into, regarding admiralty court, uh, et cetera, they're baseless, sir. And this court need not address them further. Now with that, I know it's 1130, but I would like to get one more witness on before at least we break for lunch. The jury, of course, has been out for quite some time. So I'll instruct Madam Clerk to bring the jury out. For the record, John, we didn't uh, bring up the Higgins Levine 415 US 533 decision. That was, that was not addressed and the, the issues are still not addressed. There's still been no proof to anything that you said, anything that the prosecution has said. It still Our hasn't been. is noted and we will continue. Bring the jury out, please. There still hasn't been uh, Mr. Brooks, any proof. I've addressed them there to the extent that I will. Proof. There still hasn't been any proof. I never once, the comment about me not flinching was when you said that there's 66 years of experience at that table. That's the comment I said, that doesn't make me flinch. That was mischaracterized. That should be for the record. There's still, been no, there's still been no proof. Mr. About Brooks, please stop. I'm not going to address whether there's verified proof or not of jurisdiction, because whether there's not, anything along those lines. It is frankly not required under the law. You may disagree with that, you can take that up on appeal, whether that's an interlocutory appeal or whether that's a direct appeal if there is a conviction. But I'm not going to address it any further. Because there's no verified proof. There does not need to be, sir. All right, it I believe the jury is coming out. Is that true, Madam? In order for a case to. All right, the record should reflect should that the jury is coming out and we are about to continue with the state's next not witness. Once was the plaintiff addressed? That wasn't addressed. Where's the plaintiff? Where's the injured party? That's because the jury will disregard the statements presently yeah. being made by the defendant. Because y'all don't want the jury to know the truth. The jury will disregard <laughs> those statements made by the defendant. I see, I see it is you. not his opportunity to testify. They are comments on. and as such are to be disregarded. I see what's going on. I ain't gonna lie. 
work. All right. Thank you, everyone. You may be seated. It's not going to work. Attorney Opper, you may call your next witness. Thank you. The state calls Hope Evans. All right. Good morning, Ms. Evans. If you would please make your way to the witness stand. It is up a riser, so be mindful of that. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Thank you. Please be seated. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Uh, it's uh, Hope Evans Jansen. Uh, it's H O P E E V A N S dash J A N S E N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Evans. Um, Ma'am, on the day of November 21, 2021, did you attend the Waukesha Christmas Parade? We did. And you uh, came with your family, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, sorry. Oh, that's okay, thank you. Just for the court report, if you could say yes or no. Um, and uh, was one of the people that was with you your daughter? Yes. And what was her age at the time? Uh, her age at the time was 10. Okay. And uh, was there a time when she was recording the events that were occurring during the parade? Mm, she pretty much recorded the whole parade. Okay. And were you, um, were you present when this was happening? Yes. Standing right next to her, basically? Sitting next to her. She was on my husband's lap. Okay. And you could see her... Um, using a device to record the parade yes ma'am what type of device was it an iphone and was that her phone yes okay and uh during the parade were you present when the dancing grannies were struck by the red suv yes and did that get captured by your daughter on her iphone yes at some point in time did you turn that um, recording over to the waukesha police yes and uh prior to doing that um, did you alter the content of the recording in any way? No. Was the recording that you turned over a true depiction of the events as you saw them in full, unfold right in front of you? Yes. Okay. Like to um, display Exhibit 139 to the witness only, please. Go ahead. And uh, ma'am, it should be on the screen in front of you. Um, we're going to just play it for just a few seconds first to make sure you can look at it and uh, identify this that we're talking about the same video you provided in this case, okay? So yes. we'll play about three, three or four seconds worth here. All right, does that look familiar to you? Yes. Okay. Is this the recording that your daughter captured that afternoon? Yes. And uh, the same recording that you turned over to the Waukesha Police? Yes. All right. Move to admit number 139 and permission to publish. Objection. Exhibit 139 is received. Permission to publish is granted. The objection is overruled. Your Honor, this particular recording is 15 seconds in duration. I'm going to ask that it be played with the volume on. <coughs> Go ahead. Sevens, is that what you remember seeing that afternoon? Yes. Did you hear those loud thuds? Yes. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. Mr. Brooks may have some questions for you. Any cross? Yeah, and I object to being called that name again, and I don't consent to it again for the record. Noted. Just a few questions. Uh, do you do you recall about what time you arrived at the parade that day? No. Before it started. Um, do you re recall how long you were there before the parade actually started to get underway? Not really. I don't recall.
And who all were you with? My family, uh, my friend's son, my daughter, my husband, my mother-in-law, myself. During the uh, parade, were any of you or your family injured? No. Do you recall seeing a vehicle approaching? Yes. And about how far was it from you when you saw it approaching? Uh, roughly, like, I don't really know of an estimate of the amount of distance. It was roughly when it started um, hitting the dancing grannies. Did you see the vehicle strike anyone before that that point? No, the the crowd was rather large at the parade. Do you remember the the large crowd? Uh, do you recall it being pretty loud at that at that point? Every parade I've been to has been loud in general, so. So it would be fair to say that that one was pretty loud. Yeah, I suppose. Do you recall what you did when you saw people being struck? My husband pressed my daughter into his chest so that she couldn't see. Um, I passed her to somebody behind me and then I got my mother-in-law up to go inside of the karate studio that we were sitting in front of, as well as the young man that was with us. And do you recall how long you were in the karate studio? No. Was it briefly or? We were in there until we were told that we were able to leave by the police. Did you hear uh, at any time a report of uh, shots fired? No. Did you hear any shots? It was loud and chaotic. I can't for say for sure if I heard shots or not. So would it also be fair to say that if a, a horn may have been blowing, you wouldn't have heard that either? I would have heard a horn. It, the, we weren't that far from where the vehicle came through on the road. So it'd be fair to say that you think you would have heard a horn, but not shots. I don't know if shots were fired further down the road or if I didn't hear any shots when the car went past. No, that's, I'm not asking when it went past. I'm saying uh, the question was at any time. So I, I should have been more clear, I apologize. At any time, any time during that, that moment. I don't believe I heard gunshots. I, I've never heard a gunshot before, so I can't really say yes or no. So it would be fair to say you wouldn't really know what a gunshot would sound like? Correct. Seeing as how you, you've never heard a gunshot before, would you, would it be fair to say that it might be, it might be uh, really loud? I wouldn't know. I've never heard a gunshot, so I wouldn't be able to guess. Do you recall if it was any music playing? It was a parade, so well, uh, there was music at some point. Uh, com coming bands. from coming from any of the vehicles in the parade? I don't recall at the moment.
do you recall about what time you and your family left the parade? Uh, no. You recall no. making a statement to law enforcement at any time during the, the incident? No. After the incident, the days after? Uh, when I sent the video in to the police department. Do you, do it's the only time I talked to anybody about this. Do you recall uh, uh, when that was that you sent the video in? Was it a few <laughs> days after the incident or a week or two? Or I don't honestly remember. Were you contacted by law enforcement about any follow-up to the video? No. Did you follow up with law enforcement about the video? No. I'm assuming at some point you uh, took that video off of your daughter's phone. Would that be fair to say? Correct. And did you did you post that video footage anywhere, social media or anything like that? No. So it was just only to law enforcement that the video was shown? Correct. Never showed it to any other family members or friends at any point? Objection, roll over. Grounds. Overruled. You may answer. No. Uh, when were you notified that it was when were you notified that it was a possibility that you may be called to testify in this matter? I received correspondence in the mail. Um, I don't remember the exact date of when I received it. Um, August, I think. So not that long ago then it would, would be accurate. Yeah. Or pretty recently, rather. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do you recall if that was in subpoena form? Yes. Did it state by whom the subpoena was sent? Uh, the district attorney's office. Did it have a name? Uh, Susan. Did you uh, contact the district attorney's office after receiving the subpoena? I mailed back the subpoena and I did call on October 3rd to see if I would have to come in um, because I had received no notification about anything. Um, I was told that I was going to receive a call back um, and they did contact me. Um, to say that I was an on-call witness. So at the time of uh, October the 3rd, when you uh, did a check to see if you were, would be needed, is it fair to say that at that time you wasn't sure if you would be testifying or not? Yes. Did you seek to testify in this matter? No. <laughs> And uh, <coughs> did the district attorneys ever uh, tell you in any way that they were the plaintiff in this matter? Those words were never spoken to me.
Are you aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. You don't have to answer that. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, sir. Did you or your husband or anyone in your family that was present at the parade uh, file any claims on the, on the matter? With who? Do you understand the question? Not really. Please rephrase. At any time, did you file a claim uh, with any, I guess, the agency or anything like that no. in, in regards to the incident? No. Did any inform did any information that you obtained in regards to this incident have a complaint with it? Objection grounds. Sustained us to the form of the question. Have you ever seen any complaint related to this incident? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained us to the form of a question. Do you know of any complaint with this incident? Not sure I completely understand the question on that. Um, what kind of complaint? I mean, please rephrase. Have you ever seen any uh, issued charges in, re in relation to this incident? I'm sorry. Grounds. I did not understand what Mr. Brooks just asked, Your Honor. I believe he said the issued charges. Oh. I object to that on relevance grounds, Your grounds. Honor. Grounds. Uh, overruled, she may answer. <coughs> I haven't really been keeping up with the news media on the trial, um, so no, I haven't seen a list of the charges. I was I was referring to um, if uh, you had uh, received anything from the district attorney's office about the charges issue. No. Are you aware of anyone bringing any claims or suits? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. You don't have to answer that. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Do you recall seeing the driver of the vehicle that you saw that, that day? No. Could you see if anyone else was in the vehicle that you saw? No. Can you recall if you saw any tents to the vehicle you saw? And by tents, I mean like tinted windows or anything of that nature. I don't recall if the windows were tinted or not. Do you recall where the vehicle traveled after it passed you? No, my, uh, my priority at that point was to get everybody inside and make sure they were safe. So you didn't observe anyone struck after what you saw initially? Correct.
and you stated that you haven't really been keeping up with the incident, right? Correct. So that would that would that in, uh, mean that um, it was your choice to do so, or you just kind of just disregarded it? Objection. Grounds. Over. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. After uh, turning in the, the video to law enforcement, did you keep the video at that point? Objection as an answer. Grounds. Overruled, she may answer. Uh, the video is no longer on my daughter's phone. Um, there's a copy on my phone that is still on there in case I needed to resend in the video. It has not been accessed since the day I sent it to the police. So pretty just, pretty much just keeping it just in case. Correct. Have you viewed it since turning it into law enforcement? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. It's been asked. It. it may not have been asked, but she answered it, so I'll sustain it. So it would be fair to say that seeing the video today would be the first time that you've saw it since turning it into law enforcement? Correct. Just for, for clarity, um, you are not aware of any plaintiff in this matter, correct? Asked and answered. Grounds. The is that an objection? The objection is sustained. You don't need to answer that. I think you said that you were contacted back in August, correct? I received mail with the subpoena, yes. Um, do you recall before August uh, being contacted in connection with this incident? Objection. Grounds. Repetitive, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. No grounds. Next question, please. Would you consider yourself an injured party in this incident? Objection. Grounds. Repetitive. Irrelevant. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained. Reason for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. No further questions. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. Thank you.
It is just before the noon hour, so this will be a good opportunity uh, for the court to break for lunch. Um, I will say between an hour and an hour and 15 minutes, at least for the jurors. So I'll rise for the jury, please. One o'clock, we are in recess.